Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Bone Somergraw, and I'm going to take <laughs> Spider-Man in the ring, and I'm going to crush him. Ooh, I'm going to smash him. I'm going to make him beg for his mommy, and I can't do this voice anymore. I'm Mally Moore. <laughs> I'm Nathan Simmons, and I want pictures of Spider-Man. <laughs> and I'm something of a scientist myself, and this is the Several Lotties Playlist, a podcast where we take movies back to formula. Back to formula? Ooh. <laughs> Speaking of back to formula, guys, we're going all the way back. To Spider-Man, like one of the first big true superhero movies. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were gonna say we're going back to formula to which it's only us three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're like we're like half of a sinister six, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the jaded three. <laughs> Spider-Man versus the jaded three. Okay, wait. So who's so who's who? Uh I think I would probably be Scorpion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am Craven the Hunter. <laughs> well, yeah, which which version of the Sinister Six are we going with here? Uh, I guess that's a I guess that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Well, Mally's definitely Rhino, no matter what version we do. <laughs> <laughs> but specifically the Paul Giamatti yeah. version. <laughs> and we just have a mysterious gentleman trying to put us all together. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, we're actually talking about a good Spider-Man movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, and not those. So <laughs> we're, we're talking about 2002 Spider-Man. Nathan, this was your pick. Yeah. And I, I have to assume it has something to do with the fact that we're on the eve of another, what is this, the eighth, ninth Spider-Man movie? Something like that. I mean, if you, if you count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. Yeah. Eight. yeah. If you count uh, Spider-Verse or. Oh, nine. Uh, or the Venom films. <laughs> we don't count the Venom films. We never count the Venom films for anything. Venom. Oh, um, yeah, I guys, I am like a turd. I'm so excited. <laughs> The I'm giggly because one we're talking about one of my favorite talkies. When the fuck are you not giggly? I know, but <laughs> of I, the jaded three, you're the bubbly one. That's true. Yeah, I'm the Ooh, cute one. Wait a minute. I'm Hold on. Okay, so, so he's I'm bubbles. bubbles. <laughs> Mally is definitely Buttercup. Yes. Yep. without question. So I guess that makes me blossom. One thousand percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of fit nicely, actually. Now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, that was good. JT, uh, JT's Professor Utonium when he shows up. Yeah. <laughs> So who's Mojo? Um, I feel like, no, JT is Mojo. You're right. Oh, I thought, well, I guess that makes Moss Professor X. <laughs> Any, actually, all of our guests are Mojo. Mm. Yes. Sorry, Jenny. Wait, yeah, Professor Tony, I'm sorry. What am I thinking? No, of? It's fine. It's fine. I, I I understand. Yeah, you said Professor X, and I was just going to let it slide. Different franchise, bro. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of franchises, this movie. <laughs> Honestly, I was trying to figure out. Uh, I had one spot that kept changing on the schedule. And mm -hmm. I when the trailer, the first teaser for No Way Home came out. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, you know what? I should I should rewatch those movies. So I ordered the trilogy set uh, on Blu-ray and I I was just like, fuck, like it, it genuinely and we'll get into it. But like revisiting this movie made me so happy and also sad at the same time because mm -hmm. Boys, and I this is such a boomer thing for me to say. Oh god. They don't make them like this anymore. Yeah, no, I agree. <sighs> You're not. <laughs> yeah. This is so colorful. Although <laughs> retroactively, they need to change the name of this movie to Spider Meme. Because <laughs> damn. Oh, that was the, that was the other thing. Rewatching this movie in 2021 when like every second of this film has been gifted mm -hmm. or or turned into like some kind of meme format. Yeah, I had to I had to beat the memes off with a stick to finish this movie <laughs> yeah no it's i was very excited to rewatch this when you put it on the schedule i watched it on a plane yeah and boy it's a good plane movie it is a great plane i was so fucking in on this movie dude yeah and not for nothing willem dafoe is going for it yeah crushing it he is he, not even chewing the scenery he's just like it's what's that painting of the guy eating his own kid Wait, <laughs> With, like dude he is like it's such good casting because he just straight up looks like a goblin he does yes the mask looks like his face it's <laughs> nuts that like 
he wasn't even like their fourth choice for this. Yeah. And, but he like campaigned hard for this part. It's good, dude. And not not for nothing either, but the Sam Raimi of it all. He yeah. just he slides in like butter for that. I don't I don't like the phrase slides in like butter. <laughs> well, he does. Uh-huh. You know, like the, uh, the visualization of Willem Dafoe sliding into Sam Raimi with butter. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Raimi slider man. <laughs> slider man. Um, he yeah, his visual style is so interesting. He's bringing back like some of his bag of tricks from dark man on this one mm-hmm. um there's some evil dead as hell like oh, yeah. zooms like there's some fun and, and he goes even more buck wild in the second one yeah that's why i'm excited that he's basically doing with dr strange 2 marvel's first horror film yes we'll see i have high hopes for that movie but we'll see yeah we'll see yeah i i hope so it's hard for an auteur to get their voice heard in a marvel uh framework yeah but i feel like the closest we got was ragnarok yeah with, with like truly letting a director shine hopefully we'll get you know it'll be it'll air more on that side of just like okay well this guy clearly knows what he's doing mm-hmm. because because it's fucking sam raimi <laughs> two yeah two of the greatest uh yeah one of the, my, one of my favorite directors like hands down mm-hmm. i i yeah even when even when raimi's bad he's fun mm-hmm. like i i I love him. Like probably four of the best horror movies ever Mm -hmm. and two of the best superhero movies ever. Yeah. At least. For sure. So yeah, pretty good track record. But yeah, Spider-Man 2002, we're going all the way back. I think this was genuinely like the first like big, big movie that I can remember seeing like yeah. other than like, I guess maybe I should rephrase that to like the the aughts, you know, mm-hmm. like this was like the first big CG movie that I can remember, like well, seeing him, especially those last few minutes of like just swinging around the city. I'm yeah. like, holy shit, dude. Yeah, it, it took the framework that, you know, I mean, X-Men had, had come out previously. And so yep. it was like that, that was kind of between X-Men and Blade. Yeah. Blade is the movie that saved Marvel. Yeah. Literally. Oh. Yes. 1000% literally saved Marvel. Blade is like the first true R-rated superhero movie and then X-Men was like the stepping stone to get to the foundation of the quintessential first movie mm-hmm. and then Spider-Man perfected it. And people are like, yeah, oh, we can do superhero films now and yeah. but even then X-Men was like a little bit, you know, camera shy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're not in they're not in superhero outfits. They're mm-hmm. in black, you know, tactical gear mm-hmm. and everything has to you can't say the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. We have to just call them the Brotherhood and like, you know, <laughs> just, we yep. have to do these, you know, these ways of kind of like softening the edges. And Spider-Man comes along and Sam Raimi says, "Why not put him in fucking spandex? Yeah. Why not get Willem Dafoe in a fucking Power Rangers costume. Oh Let's my do God. this. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you got, you know, Nolan's Batman Begins mm-hmm. comes after this and you got X-Men before it. And this movie is like doing its own thing, but also, like I said, taking the stepping stones of X-Men yeah. and bridging the gap between that and like a Batman Begins. Sure. And like showing you like this is the alternate path we could have taken, you know? Like we could have these bright, colorful superhero movies where mm-hmm. we're not just draft. Like, I guess that's that's the big difference between Marvel and DC anyways. Yes. DC is much more shy on the color palette well and dc's more earnest yeah like and that's 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 kind of the key to their comics also is that the the thing about marvel is that all the heroes are very aspirational but they're also very much their people mm-hmm. they're they're human beings with are the same problems we have yeah. and spider-man caught on with people because he was a an angry 15 year old mm-hmm. in the 60s uh, you know growing up during the counterculture era yeah and with mar with dc characters they're very much gods yeah. um they're these archetypes yeah. and uh and, and for better or worse the movies have kind of latched on to that i think yeah. the best marvel movies are the ones that kind of have that aw shucks can do spirit mm-hmm. <laughs> and i think this movie resonated so much because it's so relatable because we've all i mean we all looked 30 in our senior year of high school yeah. oh my god yeah. yeah so i mean i had five o'clock shadow <laughs> at my graduation it is insane when you watch this movie and you're just like we were really supposed to believe that joe manganello <laughs> Holy child. shit. <laughs> I was just about to say that. See, that's why I love watching movies from this time period, because he pops up in everything yes. from this time period. It took me forever to... I was like, I know this guy. Who the fuck is this guy? And then I right, right. It clicked, and I was like, get the fuck out of here. My girlfriend goes, is that Deathstroke? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, another thing, too, that I think really solidified this movie, because this was huge at the time, was this came out right 
right after 9-11. Oh, sure. We needed an uplifting. I mean, there's the whole point. There's there's scenes in all these Sam Raimi movies of like New York is just as much a character as yeah. Spider-Man. Like, oh, yeah. The, you mess with one of us. You mess with all of us like that. Hit. Which I think was added in a reshoot. It would make sense. Well, they took the Twin Towers out yes. of like the posters and stuff. Well, there was a, the, the original teaser for the film yes. was a was basically a short film where Spider-Man doesn't appear until the last second. Yeah. And he he like webs up a helicopter between the Twin Towers. Yeah. And it, that has been scrubbed from it's never been put out on any home video release yeah but i remember seeing that trailer in the theaters and thinking oh shit they've done it <laughs> <laughs> they cracked the code spider-man was probably involved with 9-11 if oh we're being i mean honest. absolutely he was well i you know we don't know yeah we don't know we don't know it was spider-man and dick cheney <laughs> <laughs> spider-man i knew you and osama were in this together <laughs> oh dick cheney and J. jonah jameson surely s share a lot of the same dna i would think we'll get to J. jonah jameson and why he's a menace like. <laughs> i think this movie inspired alex jones <laughs> <laughs> this movie has one of my favorite J. jonah jameson moments in any media mm -hmm. this movie has horse dewormer all over it. <laughs> <laughs> he did his own research <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did. Yeah. So this movie just hits at the right perfect time, 2002. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I said, it kind of revolution. It's much like like how Jurassic Park did like practical mixed with CG. This had fully CG Tobe Maguire swinging around a city. And I mean, there's it's shoddy in a lot of parts, but there are some parts from like this genuinely still holds up. And again, they're not putting them in shadow, which is yes. like a really easy, easy trick with, you know, with CGI. They're they're putting them in the broad daylight, mm -hmm. swinging around, you know, open spaces. And some, yeah, some of it has a little bit of a video gamey aspect to it, but mm -hmm. I think it's aged a lot better than other movies of this time period that pulled similar effects. Absolutely. I mean, I think the only really rough parts to me are the goblin glider scenes. Yeah. Those, those look a little rough. There's a couple of shots in the, in the world's fair. That's a little funky. Yes. Well, him also, um, when he when he first like realizes he has his superpowers and he's just leaping from rooftop to rooftop. Oh sure, definitely looks yeah real bad. Oh yeah, his his body is bending in some weird ways. He looks like he stepped out of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> he does look like he's out of Tony Hawk Pro Skater. <laughs> he's, he's dressed like Claude Speed from GTA Three. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, uh, for those of you who are turning in for the first time, uh, I don't think we actually really said it. This is the Silver Linings Playlist. We are a podcast that takes movies such as Spider-Man that may have a little bit of a dour ending to them. Um, and we try to find the silver lining for the characters at the end of it. So yeah. this movie ends pretty sadly. Like, uh, you know, Green Goblin's dead. Kirsten Dunst confesses her love to Tobey Maguire. And it, he says no, yeah. which was even though I've seen this movie a thousand times on this rewatch. I, I was still like, oh, yeah, like shocked at the end. <laughs> I was like, wow, the yeah. character growth in this one movie. Like and, and each of these Raimi films have a an ending that's not quite pleasing. Yeah, like they don't they don't go for crowd pleasing endings, which is a big thing from the. Yeah, the second one when it's just like that ominous shot of her, uh, that shot of her, her smile fading. It's like, oh, shit, yeah. like, this is not good, which is very true to Stan Lee and Steve Ditko's original Spider-Man books. Like things didn't work out for Pete because he was always putting his responsibilities before himself. Mm -hmm. You know, he would never he wouldn't even stand up for himself in school. There would literally be stories that would end with him thinking like I could fucking kill Flash if I wanted to <laughs> and I won't. <laughs> you know yeah. like it's uh there's there's a darkness to that character in those especially in those early days absolutely and it's like i said it's really a shame that the third one just just had too much meddling and too much yeah. like high expectations mm, and everything because mm, mm. there are there's stuff in that third one that is good yeah. but it is a lot of bad like a lot of bad so you don't like the scene where they do the twist <sighs> oh god i emo peter parker is one of the most cringe things i think i've ever seen put on film and i've seen a lot of cringe shit now dig on this yeah yeah it's rough <laughs> hey look at little look at baby goblin <laughs> uh anyways so the goal of this podcast as i mentioned is we're trying to find the silver lining at the end of it mm -hmm. but before we do that if you need a refresher on spider-man who stars in it how much it made don't worry i got you mm -hmm. just get cradled in my nice little spider web and i will <laughs> unravel the news for you right here look out here comes the spider-man <laughs> So as we mentioned, the year is 2002, and as also as we mentioned, this film is directed by Sam Raimi, who you may know from uh, Evil Dead mm. and a whole bunch of other goodies before then. Uh, the film stars Tobey Maguire, Willem Dafoe, Kirsten Dunst, uh, James Franco, whom, uh, 
Uh, Cliff Robertson and Rose Mary Harris. Ah. Um, the budget, even at the time, was still crazy. $139 million Woo! to make this movie. Incredible. Yeah. It made $825 million. Yeah. There's no, no wonder the sequel came out two years later yeah. and had twice the budget. Spider-Man 2 had the highest production budget of all time when it came out. Yeah, I know. And almost a different actor playing Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right. The movie currently sits at a well-deserved 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. Good. And it was nominated for two Oscars, which was crazy at the time because it's a superhero movie. Yeah. But it was nominated for Best Visual Effects and for Best Sound. Oh, yeah. The sound in this movie is great. I'm surprised RogerEbert.com doesn't list Macho Man Randy Savage. (laughs) That is shocking. That is upsetting that they don't list him. Well, guys, we talked about the trailer, the teaser trailer earlier. Yeah. I haven't watched the actual trailer in maybe 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. Probably since this movie came out, honestly. Yeah. I'm expecting lots of white flashes. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's a it's an action trailer from the early 2000s. Oh, yeah. Oh, I guess that's a good point. We should talk about what we expect. I expect I can be your hero, baby. I was just about to say either that or Dashboard Confessional maybe in here. Well, no, Dashboard's in the second one. Yeah. This that's one right, was shit. this one was <laughs> Josie Scott and Chad Kroger. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course. The uh, in this sea that a hero could save us. Oh, it's in the credits. Don't 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 be mistaken. This shit plays all over the credits. Yeah. That was maybe one of the best impressions you've ever done. <laughs> I'm so high. That's the t- that's the first line. <laughs> I'm expecting lots of VO. Yeah. Lots of fade to blacks. I forgot the fucking movie had VO. I was very <laughs> taken back at the beginning of this movie. Yeah. But not a lot. Not a lot of VO. It's open and closed. Just at the beginning and end. Some of the f- some of the flattest VO this side of uh, Blade Runner, though. I will yes. say. <laughs> yes. But I will say I like the VO. As it is, I yes, agree. I wish there was a little bit more of a performance into it, yeah. but I also forgive it because I'm sure Tobey Maguire was like, guys, I'm fucking tired from making this movie. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's, let's see if our predictions are correct on this trailer. I'm so high. Who am I? Oh, there's your white flash sure already. Hey. <laughs> two seconds in. in. Two seconds in. Oh, two of them. Holy shit. Guy, not a care in the world. Somebody lied. Three. That's a different read from the film, too. Oh, yeah, it's some techno. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't always like this. There was a time when life was a lot less complicated. Can I take your picture for the school paper? Sure. In this lab, we have 15 genetically enhanced This is the Flasherman trailer. Spiders. There's 14. One's missing. Yeah. Peter, are you all right? Peter loves oh, Massive boy. Attack. Hey, look, you're changing. I know I went through exactly the same thing at your age. No, not exactly. Wow. <laughs> what a weird cut. Peter, may I introduce my father, Norman Osborne? This is just for father. Harry tells me you're quite the science whiz. You know, I'm something of a scientist myself. <laughs> Got so many white flashes. Also shots that are reversed from the way they're in the film. Yeah. 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 Also, what the hell is with MJ's outfit in that scene? Uh, it's the, yeah, it's like the cultural fair, so she's wearing another culture's clothing. It's, it's not great. She looks stunning in that dress, though. I'm Spider-Man. Ooh. I get to say thank you this time. Wow. In the trailer. Okay. This trailer rules. This is just a bunch of shots with no context on anything. Too much. You're, You're not, not Superman, Superman, you know. I I will say for an early 2000s trailer, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. And I gotta say, I also I will say the uh, I, I love that line, the the Superman line, because it's it good. reminds me. I remember watching that trailer with my dad, 
and he laughed so loudly like for so <laughs> like he was just like oh no because well, we just had no like there there was nothing like we are living we were living in a drought of superhero content like you know on television all we had was smallville these Ugh. kids are fucking <laughs> spoiled these days yeah <laughs> oh i thought that was the end of the sentence these kids are fucking <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah well i mean yeah that was the tagline for smallville actually that's right they're fucking yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, hey, let's talk about Spider-Man. Let's do it. My first note was I really enjoyed the old school Marvel logo. It was nice yeah. to not have, yeah, you know, like seeing the Hulk and Iron Man and everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it was nice to just have a simple, simple logo. And that was it. And then we're right into it. Yeah. And, and I, I miss goofy cgi credit sequences like this like oh this shit straight out of the ps2 i'll say y'all remember <laughs> credit sequences that shit was great this was like very this was like the inspector gadget movies opening oh credit sequence <laughs> like like spidey's like spinning around through the frame i, I giggled and rewatched it like three times like, yeah it, <laughs> I, really I felt like i was that. playing a ps2 game like it was just like oof. absolutely i was like i, I was kind of worried i was like oh we're not off to a good start right. like, <laughs> he's opening credits but we do get um i we also get our first listen, uh, our, our first uh, bit of Danny Elfman's score, mm -hmm. which, which I, is amazing. Uh, I love it. It's fine. I, I love think it. it's I, I think it's I, I think there's some really I think when he doesn't lean into like the choral bits. Oh, I really like it. I I think the choral bit at the very end of the movie when he's swinging through the city and it's just operatic is yeah. incredible. <laughs> That's good. Oh, hell yeah. There's just some of it. Some of it feels very much like, hey, you guys remember I did Batman? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. There is a little bit of that. But I also like the very like soft horns that he does like when he's at um when they're at the cemetery. Oh, I love that shit. Yeah, that stuff's good. Yeah. And all the all the goblin stuff is good. Yeah. Like all of the goblin uh, pieces are very good. No, I there's so much going on in this first few minutes. Some of this movie that are iconic as fuck. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got the the font he just living the font choice for spider-man oh, yeah. was so incredible speaking of playstation 2 <laughs> i was gonna say even playstation <laughs> uses it you've got danny elfman's score which is iconic mm -hmm. you even got the first lines of the movie which is you know the who am i are you sure you want to know like sure. it rules it's a fucking fantastic because we start off the movie right into the shit you know what mm -hmm. i mean like Peter's already telling you, hey, some shit's about to happen. You know, you, you, don't, you don't even want to know the story. <laughs> you might not even think I'm a good person by the end of this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and then we cut immediately to uh, a bus driver giggling as he leaves a child behind, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure Mally enjoyed. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yes. How often did y'all miss the fucking bus? Like as a kid, never, never. I think I missed it once because I overslept. <laughs> yeah, like my my dad overslept or something like that. But that's, like, but that's fair. And then if you you know, I went. I put it this way: I would never chase after a bus. I guess absolutely I'm, not. Guess I missed it. <laughs> like, I guess I'm not going to school. Dope. Exactly. And then Mary Mary Jane says something like, "He's been following us for like three blocks or something." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, why are you just now saying something? Well, that and that means either there's three green lights that this bus driver just been lucky enough to go through in New York. Yeah. Or Peter's like getting there, stopping at the red light, banging on the door. The bus driver just not letting him in yeah. and then going at the green. <laughs> but he really is like from the word go. He is Stan Lee and Steve Ditko's Peter Parker. He's yeah. like got all this internalized, awkward rage. He can't win. Like he literally like just has the worst luck. And he was about to miss out on this insane field trip. Yeah. Actually, I got a question. Who who did it better hmm. in terms of a person trying to catch up to a bus and the bus driver just giggling while not letting them on? This or speed? Oh, sure. <laughs> I, oh, I was going to say this or Tommy Boy. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I think Tommy Boy might take yeah. the cake. Tommy Boy wins. Yeah. Tommy Boy wins. Tommy Boy wins, for sure. <laughs> They're basically, this, I mean, uh, let's be honest, this and Tommy Boy, basically the same movie. Yeah. Pretty much equal. I, it's hard to decipher the differences yeah. if we're being real. Absolutely. Yeah. Could you imagine David Spade as the Green Goblin? <laughs> Chris Farley as Spider-Man? That would oh have been God. fucking incredible. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> I, uh, I'm obsessed with the, the line delivery of uh, the, the, their, their chaperone. Mm -hmm. The next person who talks will fail this course. I kid you not. <laughs> like he, he has like the weirdest line delivery. It was very strange. Also, again, going back to how old these kids look, the teacher is the Younger. youngest looking of the group. <laughs> yes. Yes. The teacher looks like he's 21. <laughs> I wrote down, I was like, my notes are like, oh, yes, the early aughts where 26 year olds were in high school. <laughs> right. And I actually have a lot of notes before we even get to the field trip. First sure. of all, 
when Peter gets on the bus, the first person he's like, oh, maybe I can have a seat with is a girl that looks exactly like him. And she's like, you can't sit here, you fucking nerd. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you look exactly the same. <laughs> well, it's literally the scene from Forrest Gump. It's like, can't sit here. It yeah. is. <laughs> Seat's taken. Oh, this movie steals a lot. This movie steals from Speed. It steals from Forrest Gump. Sure. We're, get, we're getting all, all kinds of stuff here. I'm sure, let's be honest, this movie stole something from Halloween 6. Probably. <laughs> Guaranteed. And probably inspired Rise of Skywalker. A lot. <laughs> Guaranteed. I have three questions I want to get in before we get actually to like going going on this movie. Um, sure. Because we've had a couple different people now portray the character. So I want to know what your guys' thoughts on. Number one, who's your favorite Spider-Man? Ooh. Oh. Number two, who's your favorite Peter Parker? Mm. And the most important question of all, number three, who's your favorite member of the Pussy Posse? <laughs> <laughs> I got to look up that guy's name. Hang on, actually. So Toby, Toby, and Toby are my answers. Uh, <laughs> well, I... I um, okay, favorite... Favorite Peter Parker. Oh, God, I think... I actually have my answer if, if, if you need time. Yeah, go for it. My favorite Spider-Man is Tom Holland. Yeah. My favorite Peter Parker is actually Tobey Maguire. And then I guess Leo mm -hmm. for the Pussy Posse. <laughs> We can drop the last question. That, okay. was, that doesn't have to be an actual question. Um, <laughs> I really like Andrew Garfield as Spider Man. Mm -hmm. He's got he's got the quips. He yeah. does have the quips. I wish yeah. I wish he was in better movies. Yes, but I and I I actually think the Amazing Spider Man two suit is maybe the best looking suit mm. we've gotten in live action. I do like that suit a lot. See, I like this suit as my favorite. Like it's really good. This one's really good. Even when I played the um ps4 game sure as soon as i unlocked this suit this was the only one i used <laughs> yeah 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 that was that was mine for the replay see my issue with this suit is especially towards the end you kind of see it his eyes barely line up with the eyes of the suit that's <laughs> sure. true and it bugs the fuck out of me i also my big thing has always been the actual spider on the suit like yeah. tom holland's is too small <laughs> sure <laughs> it's it's almost from like the 60s animated series and then andrew garfield is like what if my spider legs had knives attached to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't like it but so i like the suit i love the fucking moving eyes yes. of the holland suit I do too. though that is good oh that's so good but also he's he's never in it anymore he's in the fucking iron uh spider suit which i, I don't care for i i get so i yeah i i would the thing that i love about this trilogy is spider-man gets to keep his suit yeah. for multiple films like you don't have to keep changing everything every movie <laughs> yeah gotta sell them toys baby yeah i don't know i think there's 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 things about both characters that i think uh, all of the actors have captured really well mm -hmm. um i i really enjoy toby Maguire as peter parker but i also think andrew garfield gets at that that kind of repressed rage that I was talking about really well. I guess my problem with Andrew Garfield is he is way too hot too to cool. be. Yeah. And too cool to be Peter Parker. Devastatingly handsome. Yeah. Absolutely. And then you, he's immediately with Emma Stone. I'm like, dude. And I, I slide between Spider-Man 2 and Into the Spider-Verse as my favorite Spider-Man movie gotcha. also. Okay. Mal, do you have an answer? I think... I really do like Maguire, yeah. but I think I'm going to kind of answer one and two at the same time because I'm okay. going for overall package. Sure. sure. I do kind of have to give it to Holland. Okay. He's great. Like as the as the overall and, most, and plus my big thing is they're actually leaving him in fucking high school. Yeah. yeah. Which is a big thing for me because yeah. like I like I hate that we don't get the early Spider-Man in like this like as far as like him not being a fucking 30 year old i agree yeah because like even like the amazing spider-man they were like yep nope he's back in high school graduates in the second one immediately yeah mm -hmm. yeah and they graduate in this one so yeah they, they're like we gotta get out of high school like <laughs> halfway through this one mm -hmm. <laughs> they graduate yeah and it's, it's actually kind of a nothing scene like oh yeah he graduated anyway yeah <laughs> he's commit he commits his first murder and then he graduates <laughs> yeah let's let's talk about that he straight up murders a guy yeah Fred. Yeah, I could I could argue that for sure. Yeah, he's at the, at the very least he is uh, responsible for. It. He's definitely he's definitely responsible. I also I always forget and I think that this this dude is um fuck what's his name from Law and Order. I always think it's him and it's not him. Vincent D'Onofrio. No, no, Christopher. Oh. Randy Savage. Oh, Christopher Maloney? Yes, Christopher. Oh. I always think it's Christopher Maloney in like a bad wig, but it's not. No, it's uh, Michael Papa John. I was just about to say has the best name ever. Papa John. <laughs> he's from Panama City. Oh, shit. Like, he's like a hometown hero. <laughs> his name is, pa his last name is Papa John. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, uh, anyways, before we get there, we also get introduced to two other characters that are a staple of this new 
new trilogy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get a complete deviant and predator and Willem Dafoe. Yeah, and I, I love that we're dealing with like uh, like feel like uh, themes of fatherhood like right away. Mm-hmm. It drives a wedge between Peter and Harry in interesting ways. And I think Dafoe plays sweet well-meaning norman osborne in really interesting ways Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well i like that he's got almost like this dual personality once he becomes the green goblin between him i mean it it does lend itself to some goofy ass scenes where he's basically just doing smeagol and Gollum. but i love that shit i really do yeah like when when it just cuts to the mask sitting on the edge of the arm of the chair i'm like attack (laughs) his heart avenge me like this shit that's going on oh my god man you're Nathan, your Green Goblin is suspiciously close to your Loomis. <laughs> Guys, I haven't seen the Green Goblin and Nathan in the same place at the same time. And, and you shan't. <laughs> Nathan ain't fitting in that suit. No, no. I, I tried to fit it. I tried to put it on and I was just, I just yelled, misery, misery, misery. <laughs> I think the casting here is phenomenal because yeah. Will and Defoe and James Frick are together. Like they do Ugh. really work well together as father and son. Yeah. I, Franco's bad in this. He's bad. He's bad kind of in all of these. He's, yes. he's a little more campy and hammy in the second one. Yeah. Like when he gives the, the it's a meme now, but the wink from the, in the cafe while he's eating, it's good. That's the third one, isn't it? Is that the third one? You might be right. Yeah. Cause that's when he, that's when, that's when Harry becomes Mr. Celio girl. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That third movie's real bad. Um, yep. anyway, so we're on this field trip. I, I think it's interesting that like Norman says he wrote a paper and then Peter says, yeah, I wrote a paper on your paper. I'm right. like, what? Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> on your, on your research and yeah. he's like and you understood and you understood it mm-hmm. he goes yes sir yeah. and he's immediately like enamored with this kid uh-huh. what if he was like no actually my paper was just me saying what the fuck is this shit <laughs> yeah, right. i just doodled some stuff on it you know it's very reanimator where he's just like i found your work to be <laughs> elementary yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah actually i just erased your i just white outed your name put mine on it turned it in <laughs> got a c plus um nathan you talked about this recently where we, we i think it was in dead zone maybe mm-hmm. where we talked about uh people learning things in class that then become relevant to them oh Mm -hmm. sure i think you can apply that same kind of cliche here with every spider that they see before he gets bit is all has one of the abilities (laughs) yeah and that means he's getting bitten by like the ultimate inbred spider that's got all these well it's not even that after he gets bitten yeah it cuts to this screen that literally lists his new abilities oh that is (laughs) maybe the the most sam raimi shit in the movie like it is the the montage of the computer screens, the super spider presentation, mm-hmm. a CGI skull like screaming at the camera. Oh my god, yeah, that is definitely Raimi. Yeah, it is dark man as fuck. I mm-hmm. love it so much. Which let's let's talk about him taking photos of MJ. Um, he's gonna touch himself to those later, right? <sighs> like he's a really nice guy. Yeah, he's a really guys. He's really nice. The girls just don't <laughs> give him like girls. Girls just don't like nice guys. Like that's yeah. the problem. Is that's like, why he has to become emo Peter Parker in the third one. Okay, no, N- <laughs> Nathan, you're getting your. We're talking about the movie, not. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're getting too real. Not my, not the 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 other YouTube channel I run. Yeah. Um, the uh, no the. <laughs> You know, I, you know, I just hate that these movies are woke now. Does your girlfriend know she's your girlfriend? <laughs> I would Jesus hope so. Christ. I mean, I do have to sleep under the sink. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but he's saying, yeah, like it, the, 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 the relationship between Peter and MJ in this is interesting because the movie kind of takes its time. The relationship doesn't exist until she confesses his love for him at the end. Yeah. Right. That's true. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I disagree because I also think it is so blatantly obvious that MJ is into Peter yes. and he just can't see it for whatever reason. Right. But also she plays it like she plays it so cool to the point where like it's 30 or 40 minutes into the movie before you realize that they're neighbors and they've lived next door to each other since they were like six. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's has been known her and the first time he saw her he thought she was an angel as as uh aunt may says yeah, very phantom menace yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit a little bit are you an angel yeah yeah I, yeah actually now that you mentioned this movie does steal a lot from other movies <laughs> uh-huh. but i i genuinely like their relationship in this movie like yeah it's a it's a little stalkery at points but it is it, 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 but what i'm saying is i like that peter doesn't get the girl at the end like yes he can and he chooses not to that is yes yes it's all he wants pretty much about this whole movie because he's a nice guy he's a nice <laughs> guy like she just wouldn't get it but like when kirsten dunce is like telling like when he well actually i take it back when they're in the hospital room and aunt may 
and he's explaining what he what he told Spider-Man about her. I love that scene so much. It's beautiful. And then when at the end, when she's like, I love you, and he's like, I can't. Watching Kirsten Dunst's heart just break in real time is... She's really good in that scene. You forget how good she is in these movies. Yeah. Yeah, no, she's she's going above and beyond this character. And, and I, I... Yeah, I... I think almost everybody in this movie is. I agree. Almost all of them. Like, Willem Dafoe is... Especially. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit, yeah. <laughs> Most of my notes are about Willem Dafoe. <laughs> it's so funny because in my head, I always prop up uh, Alfred Molina as the best Spider-Man villain. Mm-hmm. And then re-watching this movie, I was like, I don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really pretty close good. to me. It's, I mean, I think Dafoe knew what these movies were going to be. And yes. that's why he like really leans into the camp. And he's a fan of the comics, too. Yes. Yeah. And I think Alfred, Alfred Molina is great as Doc Ock, but yeah. I think he's also playing it a little more like a little darker like a little more empire strikes back he's almost shakespearean yes neither of them are nearly as good as fucking eddie brock in the third one so oh, sure boy. Topher grace duh <laughs> my boy my boy toph coming through yeah when i think eddie brock first guy i think of Topher grace yeah second <laughs> guy tom hardy <laughs> oh my God. they just can't seem to get that character right kid <laughs> what is tom hardy do- what is tom hardy is tom hardy a good actor what is tom hardy that is a great question <laughs> this is a genuine question Question. Am I? I know this is like a, he is. Is he a good actor? Just look at him. Just look. Oh, at you're him. right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Well, in, in that case, no. I, I think Tom Hardy is good in the right pretense. Bronson, great. Uh, yeah, he is incredible in Bronson. Uh, Venom, no, thank you. Peaky Blinders, <laughs> fucking incredible. Mm-hmm. That's true. It's just there's so there's so many movies recently that hardy's been in or, you know, i mean not even recently maybe just the last decade or whatever where the the performance doesn't seem to go beyond i'm, I'm really sweaty right now you guys like he's like <laughs> he's like a buff british charlie day oh my god <laughs> he is somehow yeah a really attractive man like he's mad max he's manly as fuck oh he is great in fury road and at the same time he's a fucking dork i i think it's it's He's got that Joseph Gordon-Levitt thing where what? he makes everything too difficult for himself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. Like Joseph Gordon-Levitt's like, oh, you want me to play the high-rise wire guy? Okay, well, I will learn to speak French perfectly. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to fucking do... Let's stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Christian Bale learning to play the drums just for that one scene and uh, the big short and right. stuff like that. It's like, you don't have to do that, man. <laughs> And in fact, we're fine if you don't. Yeah, it's probably better if you don't. And uh, Christian Bale played that smart. He got the production to buy him a drum set. That's, That's fair. true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Now he has a drum set. That's fair. He played it smart. But yeah, so we get the scene with the uh, Norman and the and the military contract and all that. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, this Dr. Strom guy really gets the short end of the stick because yeah. he's just trying to not murder people. <laughs> yeah. That's all he's trying to do. And yeah. when... When he says, when Norman's like, oh, well, we can have a human trial in two weeks. And I'm like, holy shit, for real? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. He's the human trial. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's really quickly for a human trial. (laughs) This movie is just all about COVID vaccines. That's all it is. That's right. That's right. (laughs) He did his own research. The military guy is like, I'm going to do my own research. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I love that they come in and they just immediately decide, like, fuck Norman Osborn. Like, we don't even care that he has this dope ass glider. The military does that and the board of directors do. They're like, this looks good. By the way, you're fired. In in a lot of ways, it's like, wow, this is how two different guys handle stress. Yeah. You know, Spider-Man becomes a superhero and Norman Osborn decides to turn people into skeletons. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about that when we get there. But you know what? I got to say. I caught him on. I'm caught him on the Green Goblin side. I know I always saw yeah, no, the they villains. Fucked him. Yeah, the military fucked him. The board fucked him. Yeah. Could you imagine getting kicked out of your own company with your fucking name? I mean, Papa John deserved it when it happened to him. But can you imagine after you've already pumped yourself full of murderer juice? Yeah. Uh, which actually, speaking of related note, me and Nathan would really like to discuss uh, ownership of holy propaganda with no. you. No. You can't do this to me! (laughs) Do you know how much I've sacrificed? (laughs) Was that from the soundboard? Holy shit! I, can we talk about the green goblin suit real quick? Yes. For for practical purposes, I get the suit being designed how it is. Uh, why does it gotta? Why does the helmet gotta be? <laughs> should look like that. It's aerodynamics. <laughs> is it with the giant eyebrows and everything? That's what I'm bullshitting. Well, yeah, and what's even what's worse is they built 
like an animatronic goblin face for him to do like full on transformations mm-hmm. like like they, he does in the comics and those they look rad. Yeah, I, I don't I don't like that. I could see Willem Dafoe's mouth behind the mesh screening of the mouth. That it's didn't do it's it. like that shot in the Ninja Turtles movie yes. where you see the stunt <laughs> yeah. actor inside of Donatello's mouth. <laughs> it's, it's not good. I, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> it it's well so upsetting. Me. Yeah, no, I. I I I don't love that costume design, but it's also I do appreciate that it is of a it's of a piece with the glider. Like they all have the kind of same sort of weird Art Deco edges to them. Yeah, and I, I do dig that. Well, and it, I think it fits. I do think it fits well with Maguire's Spider Man outfit too. Like they look good next to each other. But you're right, it is very much like a Rita Repulsa Power Rangers kind of fucking yeah. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> Make my goblin grow. <laughs> Oh, the little goblin. I don't like that either. <laughs> little goblin. Mm-mm. We get introduced to Rosemary Harris and Cliff Robertson. I think Rosemary Harris is... I think so, too. A great... Yeah. <laughs> I think she's a great uh, Aunt May. She's, Cliff Robertson's not oh, bad as excellent. Uncle Ben. I, I, I love Cliff Robertson. But, I mean, it certainly beats Marissa Tomei, right? Doesn't it? It's weird. It's weird that every time there's a reboot, like, how can we make Aunt May more fuckable as, yeah. like, one of the main directives? <laughs> she's, it's going to be Ana de Armas in the next reboot. I swear to God. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Mally's the demographic they're trying to hit. And it's the kid from Jojo Rabbit as Peter Parker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kid from Jojo Rabbit could actually be a pretty good Peter Parker in a few years. I'd buy that. Yeah, no, like, I, you're pitching the fuck out of this movie right now, Nathan. Or you, like, know who, you know who I actually think, and that might just be because I'm a huge fan of his and I think he should be in everything. I think Jaden Martell would be a pretty oh, good yeah, Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this this is this this first scene between Aunt May and uh, Uncle Ben. Where Ben Ben can't do computers. Yeah. It feels too much like a play, like yes. I'm watching like uh, Fences or something. <laughs> like the way <laughs> sure. the dialogue is rolling off. Well, I'm too old to learn computers. Even the computers need analysts. How about that? It's very death of a salesman. <laughs> yes, like, it is a very death of a salesman. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, but I, I I think they're so. I think it's important to see them together. It's you know cute. what I mean? Like we don't we get. We don't get a whole lot of scenes with Uncle Ben that aren't, you know, Peter centric. And yeah. so it's nice to see that they're like this sweet couple that doesn't argue. And clearly they're down on their luck and yeah. low on money. And they're still just kind of like sticking it out together. And I, I think that's a great scene. No, I, I think they're great. I think they're great together. I mean, they for casting like an aunt and uncle, I think they do well with Peter. Like I, I said, I think the casting of this movie is really on point. Yeah. But then we get Defoe doing his Green Goblin injection. And I got to say, it, he's straight up stealing the ooze from Ninja Turtles 2. He does. Mm. And <laughs> injecting it into himself. And he gets dead eyed eyes yes, he from does. Evil Dead. <laughs> oh, the, the seizure that Willem Defoe has oh, here. Oh, my God. Wild. It's both terrifying and also like dude what do you do <laughs> right can't be a shit <laughs> it is this this is very evil i mean i know we talk a lot about doc ock surgery and evil dead 2 or uh, sure. spider-man 2 is being very evil dead which it is yeah this scene here is also really evil like when oh he, yeah man when he lunges out of the the broken glass and he just kind of like crouches and goes <laughs> <laughs> like this is it's so good it's great is that not how you guys wake up oh every morning yeah i jump onto the, the foot of the bed <laughs> that's how i get out of the shower i hiss at my cats he is fully unhinged in this movie and it, it's all the better for it <laughs> even before the seizure when he's being strapped into the table and he goes oh it's cold yeah like that's so fucking funny uh, man it's cold i'm getting my booster <laughs> shot here in a few weeks yeah. and if i don't wake up the next morning just <laughs> fucking ripped yeah uh i hope so i'm gonna be pissed like what if i call you guys and i'm just like yo i uh so i can climb buildings now <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how casual it is <laughs> god i i hate that I, I that shot of the barbs coming out of his fingers has fucked me up forever oh it's gross like i i think it's it's great but it's so creepy it's so just like ugh. that's a question i have to i mean yeah it is real creepy that is a question that I know a lot of people have a problem with this movie for one particular reason um but i have no issue with it the organic webbing yeah i don't i like it <sighs> i think it makes sense from a storytelling standpoint yes, from for this For this particular story, it makes sense. I don't like the noise they chose. (laughs) I don't either. (laughs) I don't like that the spot on his wrist where it comes out looks like a permanent cum shot. (laughs) It does. It looks like dried simmon. Hey, Green Goblin, does does, uh, any of these fuckers ever burst out of my skin? (laughs) I but no, I like it that it's organic because it makes sense. Um, because this this Peter Parker is not 
as like super genius science minded yes he's not as science minded yeah. as, as the other version so it makes sense to make it a little more organic yeah no he's he's like a he's a smart student mm-hmm. he's clearly like very clever and quick on his feet but he's not yeah he's not like i'm gonna build my own and, and they kind of circumvented that in amazing spider-man where he stole it from oscorp and then reverse engineered it mm-hmm. yeah um but like cutting it out of this movie that cuts an extra like 15 minutes that you don't have to like deal with him like putting yeah. that stuff together He's not Tony Stark Jr. in this version, right. which he is in the new ones, basically, which is my biggest issue with the the MCU Spider-Man. It's yeah. like I, I love Peter Parker as kind of like a, a lone wolf yeah. sort of, you know, want to be kind of badass he's too obsessed with Tony Stark. And <laughs> he's an Avengers fanboy. Yeah, he's, he's Robin to Tony, Har- uh, Tony, Tony, Tony Hawk. Hawk's <laughs> Tony Hawk's pro Iron Man. Yeah. I want to I would watch that movie, which, by the way, Spider-Man was in Tony Hawk, too. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Oh. Um, yeah. I, also, uh, in the fight with Flash, we get that CGI spitball. Yeah. Gross. Oh, the, the slow motion stuff is great here with the Spidey senses. It's great. We also get that hero extra mm-hmm. who's in like a thousand movies. The the ginger kid who's yeah, like yeah. in the background of a zillion movies. He's in that shot. Yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. Well, the practical effect, too, of Peter catching all the food on the tray it's great. is apparently a real thing that took a, a lot of takes yes that's amazing yeah i think it's great and i i that's another thing too we don't really get spider sense that much in the mcu ones either like no. we get hair raising on his arms and that's it yeah <laughs> i don't know uh there's like there's one or two there's like two or three moments in every movie they're just much more subtle about it yeah which i actually kind of like yeah and uh, well infinity war is the big one which i like yeah I, I like that too one of the lines that i fucking hate in this movie after <laughs> he does the lunch tray thing yeah mm-hmm. she looks at him and says you have blue eyes i didn't notice yeah without your glasses oh yeah, yeah. huh <laughs> the glasses are see-through yeah you can <laughs> you can see right through those motherfuckers he's not tommy Wiseau. like yeah. he's not walking around in sunglasses <laughs> yeah like Motherfucker's not rocking shades every day. But also, I'm like, she gives you a layup right here, Peter. Be like, yeah, they are blue. You know what? You have nice eyes, too. How about we get a date? Yeah. How about that? <laughs> like, and he's just like, fumbles the bag real hard. Wow. Is that how you got Priscilla? You're yeah. just like, how about we get a date? Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, what's going on? Look at those eyes. Hey. Those are some green eyes of yours. Hey, let's go. What do you say? <laughs> and then he just, he just straight up pulled it out, just... Put it on the table. <laughs> I'm, du- I'm Dustin goes to Hollywood. How about I goes to your place tonight around eight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, guys, it's 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 a tried and true formula. I always forget Dustin's from New York. That's mm-hmm. right. Yeah. Hey, hey. You go on a date with one of us. You go on a date with all of us. <laughs> you want to get to him? You got to go through me. Hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Careful with him. He's a hero. <laughs> Uh, that's the, that's when we're all passing him over us in the train car. Um, I'm not picking Dustin up. (laughs) No fucking way. I have, I have a a bone to pick too. In terms of, uh, movie tropes. Yeah. This happens all the time in movies too. And it happens here when he has the fight, quote unquote, with Flash Thompson Mm -hmm. and he just kind of shoves him and he flies across the, the hall. Yeah. And all the kids see that he just did like a triple bag flip. That flip is insane. Yeah. And like did all this and they're just like, wow, what a freak. Yeah. And I'm like, that would not be your response in reality. You'd no. be like, what the fuck? Holy <laughs> shit. Well, I mean, it depends. Like if he did that here in Georgia, they'd probably be like, uh, shoot him. Yeah. Burn him yeah. alive. Burn- <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Take him to the. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It cuts to Tobey Maguire, Ted Levine style and he'll have eyes just on a fucking cross. Just burn. Him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so after that fight, this man goes from like learning about his webs to fucking jumping off buildings in about 2.5 seconds. But I, I kind of like it because the scene of him climbing the wall and him like getting up just a few feet and looking down and be like, holy shit. And I, then it yeah. just cuts to him leaping across rooftops. And the implication is that he spent like six hours doing mm-hmm. this. Like, mm-hmm. and I, I, I kind of, I love, I love that. The, the scene of them, him trying to figure out how to shoot his webs yes. still works for me. I think it's so funny. But when he does, yeah, all the different hand shapes. It's such a Sam, Sam Raimi type of thing but it's so good up up and away web yeah yeah <laughs> that's what nathan screams as he's orgasming uh, I, I knew it was coming yep. i knew it was coming that's and that's what uh, everyone around me screams <laughs> i knew it was coming oh everyone else on the train There's so many- <laughs> <laughs> but then you get actually what i think is a good like a superhero learning his superpowers but he tries to go across the street 
first of all, nobody sees it, even though the wide shot is like, oh, they would clearly see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he's going, oh, across the street. Yeah. And then, of course, just slamming into the side of the billboard, which I think is great. Into a billboard that says traffic is fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which, no, it's not. I think that's great. I like Danny Elfman's score every time he puts a hand on the wall. It's like, brump. Brump as he's like climbing it. Oh yeah, that's good. I think that's good. Yeah, those <laughs> horn hits. Yeah. No, I'll, yeah, I I love I love those elements of it. It's just the to me, there's some bits, especially in the action scenes, that just feel very Batman to me. Yeah. But it, you know, I don't know. That's it's also Danny Elfman, so whatever. Yeah, yeah. He's scored more films than me. Yeah. Damn, big if true. <laughs> and also speaking of uh, Batman, it does kind of get a little '60s Batman during the fight scenes, like mm -mm. the pow, pow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that shit. But it's for yeah, for a modern audience for sure. Then yeah, we get a real creepy line from Peter uh -huh. when he says, uh, but also a really funny line where he's like, "Oh, you're a great actress. I cried like a baby when you were in Cinderella." She was like, "Peter, that was the first grade." <laughs> I thought that's a. I think that's a sweet moment. It's sweet, but it's also like, "Oh, come on, dude." <laughs> I all I kept thinking about during this scene is Hot Rod <laughs> and takes the trash out. Uh -huh. This is the uh -huh. this is the you look shitty Denise line yeah. scene. <laughs> yep, yep. I also think it's pretty apt that Flash Thompson gets a prowler as a birthday gift because like, he seems like a creep. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that's about right. Yeah. Then we get the fucking costume drawing montage. Oh yeah, with uh, Phil Jimenez uh, artwork. Like they they got they got actual like Marvel artists. Too. But but bef before we get that though, we do get a, <laughs> a newspaper wipe to a new scene, which yeah. I was like, wow, wow. Okay. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah. But I I love this montage of him coming up with the suit. I mm -hmm. think it's great. It's it's equal parts campy and equal parts just fucking lit. Like <laughs> needs more color. Yeah, I am a fan of. I'm such a huge fan of uh, these kind of montages in movies like this and like Dick Tracy. Anything mm -hmm. that's like we'll we'll throw we'll throw a newspaper at the screen mm -hmm. or you know show like the passage of time in very dynamic and fun goofy ways. Um, I also love the the through line of him going through the sales papers mm -hmm. and downgrading his prospects yep. for a car yep. until it's like old beaters, <laughs> yep. um, which is also very much like Hot Rod. That you know what kind of what you know what car is really uh, overrated? Corvette. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the car Flash Thompson was driving? Yeah, I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> we, I mean, we've all done that with cars, clothing, women. You Jesus. know, it... <laughs> guys. Now that, I'm, now that I'm thinking, of, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, you know who would be a really good Spider-Man? Yorma. Yes, Yorma. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You're right. You're right. And I just want to see him in like, like in his, but yeah, in his pajamas when he's singing to his stuffed animals. I want that <laughs> as my Spider-Man. <laughs> she looked me in the face, and I webbed in my pants. Hey, Harry, I'm sorry I killed your dad. Cool beans. Yeah. Well, you know what would be good is like Spider-Man gets beat the shit out of, and he's always flying into walls and buildings and shit. It was like. What if that's just what happens to Spider-Man? Like, that's where you start the movie. He's been in Spider-Man for years. Mm -hmm. He's had a lot of brain damage over the years. Oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> just just a lot of head injuries because he refuses to wear a helmet. And, and that's the... Exactly. That's the opening scene. It's just him singing to a stuffed animal. Just <laughs> <pajama>. <laughs> I like this idea for a movie. Let's get the lonely island of the fold. Let's, Let's get do it. Uh, yeah, Pete decides to go wrestle for some money. Well, and then we get maybe the most relatable line ever uh -oh. and it's uncle ben referring to driving peter downtown as exercise <laughs> <laughs> sure mm -hmm. i'm just like man ben i get it in that little <laughs> montage of him trying to learn how to use his webs and everything and he breaks his lamp uh -huh. and like shoots the dr pepper can and stuff i i think aunt may may be going blind because there's no way she would not see all of those spider webs all over his bedroom <laughs> sure. when she peeks in <laughs> sure i mean she was a teenager once she's like oh it's just seven yeah that's uh, i was gonna say i also like uncle ben being like yeah that's just teenagers they're going through puberty <laughs> raging hormones yeah, he's breaking lamps and shit. he's breaking lamps he's running on the walls yeah yeah for real, get your dirty ass shoes off my freshly we were supposed to paint these walls you piece of shit hey picasso yeah um <laughs> i love uh by the way ben uh uncle ben's car is sam raimi's oldsmobile isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay and all his movies <laughs> that was, yeah that made me very happy that's great but also, now that I'm thinking about it, does that do they think that he broke the lamp with his dick? If they're just, like, yeah, the lamp yeah. broken, his, his hormones are crazy. That's <laughs> how hard he was. Yeah. <laughs> That's just one of the side effects. That's what wasn't listed on the screen was incredibly <laughs> durable dick. Can we talk about <laughs> Uncle Ben's hair? Yeah. yeah. 
We can talk about it. Go for it. Why is it only gray at the very front? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. Like, did they not plan on shooting him in profile? Oh no, that's when you when you hit uh, you know, like older ages, it mm -hmm. starts in the front and just works its way towards the back. <laughs> I don't know. I, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why like your 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 face starts to like gravity starts to pull you down towards hell mm -hmm. in the front before it gets to the back, and that's when you get the you know the uh, the hunchback and all that. It starts in the front, works in the back. Wait, is that why most of my gray hair? is in my mustache yeah did you not read my research paper on that i wrote my own paper i well it, uh i just erased your name and turned it in oh, okay <laughs> right but like a couple years before this cliff robertson played the president in escape from la and he was mm -hmm. starting to get like that gray just in the front mm -hmm. it's so it's it's pretty wild mm -hmm. he was start he grayed like steven toast like, well and then like some people like another marvel movie you got richard madden in the eternals who just has like the like just the perfect gray swoop in his hair that is how i hope my hair starts to turn gray bro how is that natural well you know what i want i i it's never gonna happen mm. but i hope i age into my gray hair how timothy oliphant was in the mandalorian oh i wish i'm like this is this is this is how i need to go uh, okay you trying to age like you trying to age like Clooney. i'm trying to age fuckable is what i'm right. trying to age. right and i'm gonna end up looking like the fucking calendar man <laughs> it's, just, it's not gonna go well for me i'm gonna be like nick nolte's character from the mandalorian instead <laughs> God, I have spoken. Yeah, I have spoken. Nathan loses all of his hair and f turns out he has a fucking calendar tattoo under it the whole time. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> I was wondering why you knew every single holiday, like, and you would just text me, like, hey, by the way, happy Arbor Day. And I'm yeah. like, hmm, that's weird. You'll find the body. I don't know, like, this motherfucker <laughs> texted me the other day, like, hey, happy Veterans Day. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so we get one of the best quotes uh, of any movie ever uh, that gets, that got ran into the ground and parodied to death, but that's with great power comes great responsibility. Yep. Yeah. And the way he delivers that line, it's it's a chef's kiss. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, I, I think I remember this, this scene between Ben and Peter the last time they see each other being, like, really more tense and angry and i'm like eh. i mean the, the worst thing is that peter being like oh uh, yeah you're not my dad yeah and it's like yeah that, that is rude and, and it's heartbreaking but Which, i mean like watching this scene now that i'm older i'm like yeah peter's being a little bitch about it right now <laughs> yeah. he's brushing him off real hard um yeah and that's that's a thing the, the to me the trick with this kind of thing i feel the same way about whenever we see in a comic book or a movie a flashback to bruce wayne like arguing with his parents mm -hmm. i think the trick has to be that their relationship is perfect until this happens you know what i mean like yeah. this like this like destroys everything but i i kind of and i kind of like the fact that peter's like he doesn't say like the worst thing to him but he's still just like i could have made i could have made i could have said something sweeter like i could have i could have i don't know it's it's an interesting scene it's not rude enough that it's like earth shattering mm -hmm. but it's like man if i had known this was my last moments i could have been a little bit nicer you know what i mean and they do find a really uh, like i think a really great organic way of working that great responsibility line in because mm -hmm. that's that's straight out of the comics and it's always mm -hmm. been something that's kind of like uh attributed to uncle ben but like it wasn't there from the beginning yeah that was more of like a it was a it was the end it was like the end caption of the first spider-man story and then they sort of reworked it to be something uncle ben had passed on to him mm -hmm. uh, in later years right it's good though yeah the movie the movie justifies it i think and then we get to the scene that is probably in the universe of this movie the biggest insurance nightmare i could ever think imaginable which is <laughs> amateur wrestling night just anybody <laughs> Anybody could come in the crowd and let Randy Savage uh, beat you to death with a with a chair. I love this scene so much. It's great. Uh, I mean, you got Bruce Campbell yes. eating the fucking scenery. Octavia Spencer? Dude, yeah. surprise Octavia Spencer. Holy shit. You also have Spider-Man being a little homophobic. Very, Not great. Very. Not great. Yeah. Well, and also she's not. But I swore one of these wrestling ladies, like the like the ones that are insulting him as he's walking down the ramp. Yeah. I th it's not scary spice. No, I thought it was January Jones. What? I thought one of them was oh, January sure. Jones. I had to, I I looked it up, and it's it's definitely not. But yeah, it's February Smith. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I was a, I I love Bone Saw McGraw as a concept. Like he's it's great. not even the character that he fought in the original comics. They like created a new persona for Randy Savage. Oh, 
Oh, I, I like when the cage comes down. Oh yeah, and he's like, "You you going nowhere? <laughs> I got you for three minutes." Um, my band used to use the clip of him screaming, "Bone saw is ready!" Yeah, whenever we'd come out on stage. Oh no! And my buddy Kyle and I in college had played with the idea of doing a fake trailer for a like Lifetime original movie about Bone Saw McGraw, like in the style of the wrestler. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it was. It was going to be called Three Minutes of Life. Time, the Bone Saw McGraw story. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> that's incredible! The movie was gonna, the movie was gonna, end, or the trailer was gonna end with him looking up at the sky and seeing like all the people that had helped him along the way. And he, as he wiped one <laughs> tear away, wait, he would go wait, like, he like would go, uh, Happy Gilmore when yes. he sees the alligator and everything. <laughs> yes, and he'd, he'd wipe one tear away and just go, "How'd you get up there?" <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I. I, I will I will EP this movie. I'll supply some some funding. I will put some money. We've been in talking that. about doing this for like thirteen years at this point. Like I want it to happen so bad. There's there's so much that happens in this one little scene with this wrestling match. Yeah. But one of my favorites is the girl handing him the chair, saying "Finish him off." And I'm like, he hasn't even touched Spider Man yet. Right. I don't think you can do a finishing move right. with a flawless victory. <laughs> oh, you clearly never button mashed in Mortal Kombat. I right? guess. And then. There's a fucking crowbar. I'm like, there's. I I know it's heightened for the movie. I'm like, there's no way any of this shit. This shit would be shut the fuck down immediately. I don't know, man. Have you ever watched a fucking Hell in the Cell match? <laughs> shit gets real, bro. Yeah. So, do you guys think that the the audience members brought those saw props from home? Oh. Those those hand saws made of cardboard. I was like, fuck yeah. So funny. Yeah. I'm into it. I love it. Honestly, this came out around the same time as Ready to Rumble, and both of those movies made me believe that people could get murdered in the ring, like mm-hmm. <laughs> just any time. R.I.P. Owen Hart. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Uh, who who robs an underground wrestling ring? Like, why, why is that the place you rob? Well, according to Spider-Man 3, oh, it was uh, actually Sandman's idea. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually. <laughs> Actually, yeah, for sure. I don't, I, do you guys care about that rework at all? I think it's fine. Uh, it's a weird retcon. <sighs> oh my god! Hold, hold on, hold on. Sorry, pause. My my lovely wife just brought me a mug of hot chocolate Aww. with whipped cream and some marshmallows in it. Very nice. Thank you, baby. Tell her to fuck off. We're recording. Hold on, hold on. You gotta get this. You gotta get this on the microphone. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> very nice. Very sweet. Now get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I love you. All right. God. Damn it, Priscilla! <laughs> I wish she'd leaned into the microphone and just said, Baby Groot. <laughs> what if she would have leaned into it? Bone saws. Really? <laughs> that video was so funny. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. That's how you're going to start intercourse from now on, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe that's what that's the new segment is if my wife would like to and not by force no way. bring me a nice little beverage in the middle of every that's record. a good one yeah it replaces the drink of the movie <laughs> mm-hmm. what did priscilla make this time <laughs> actually hang on no my i i'm pitching a different segment dustin has to pick one line from each movie to yell why while coming oh cool <laughs> cool cool yeah i like that that's, that's fine this is good yeah priscilla will love that yeah <laughs> Oh, these are good marshmallows, bro. <laughs> Great. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Thanks for bringing some for the fucking rest of us. Yeah. I know, for real. Hold on, uh, guys. I'll pour it on the laptop. Maybe someone will get through the interwebs to you. <laughs> this, this chase scene with the killer mm-hmm. uh, is great. I think... It also reminds you how much Sam Raimi wanted to make a Batman movie at mm-hmm. one point. <laughs> oh, it's cold as fuck. And the guy's like, hey, you could have stopped him. And he gives him the line back of, that sounds like it's your problem or whatever. And I'm like, ooh. Oh, yeah. I, I missed the part where that's my problem. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So that's a cold motherfucker right there. And he's dead eyed when he says it. Yeah. <laughs> he is dead eyed when he says it. <laughs> he's so proud of himself. It's a good It's a good exchange. I liked it. This chase is shot like a horror movie. Mm-hmm. The, like him, him, like, you know, coming down behind the, the 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 burglar and then you know sneaking up on him like it's it's pretty intense i i like that peter slams this dude's head into not one but two of the glass panes on this door he, <laughs> he really does <laughs> he goes through one and then, i mean he could just very easily just throw his head against the door if that's what he wants to do he's like nope gotta also break this glass <laughs> he's taking a hot rod it's like breaking all the lamps in the house like, yeah he's gotta go through if they would have broken his, his his like push this dude's head through more glass panes throughout this whole building just break every <laughs> single window pane. it's like that shot of uh, it should have been the shot of like jason shoving freddy through like the side of the cabin mm-hmm. oh my god mm-hmm. yeah spider-man's first kill yeah he uh scares the guy till he falls to his death <laughs> i like the scene i don't understand how he gets away with the spotlight on him right but uh he does he does <laughs> 
He he's, uh, swings away, and then we cut to graduation. Well, bef- before we get there, yeah, we get one of the funniest <laughs> fucking scenes of the oh, movie no. to me. The first true Green Goblin scene. Oh, right. Sure. Where the military guy's at the other, the competing company um, that's making the glider technology and all that, and they've got the uh, the uh, pilot testing out like the, <laughs> the space suit, and he's just like, what is that? And in his helmet visor, you see the reflection of just this rocket oh, yeah. coming towards him, and just the, the Green Goblin blows this dude to pieces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, that's the one of the hardest murders in a, in a superhero movie I've ever seen. <laughs> There's some truly insane violence in this movie. Oh, and he's giggling the whole time. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, that's the, the before you see him, you hear him go. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 a good cackle. It's a great cackle. So good. I, I guess Flash Thompson got Mary Jane. A, he proposed to her because he's like, she's like, Here, you can have your ring back. I'm like, you guys are in high school. I think it was his class ring. It's a promise ring. Oh, yeah. Was it a promise ring? OK. Or yeah. Or his class ring or something. Thing, yeah the way she like handed it back to him i was like holy shit he's a big jonas brothers fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right yeah flash thompson said i wouldn't i wouldn't want to have sex with me neither <laughs> i also think for his like campy and upbeat and fun as this movie is when it actually does have to get serious and have like the real like emotional moments mm-hmm. the scene with peter sitting on the edge of his bed after graduation and i missed him a lot today i know Ooh. i i teared up that's great yeah uh and and it's that's very that's very honest like yeah. i think that that's a that's a real thing that I have said about people that I was like, oh, I would have loved for this person to have like shared this day, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I, I that's a great moment. Even even uh, you know, Norman at the graduation when he's like, Look, you know, today is not a day about being somber that your your uncle's dad's about enjoying the fact that you graduated and you made it and all this stuff. And he'd be proud of you. It's a very like I mean, this is kind of a trope at this point now of like the hero and the villain kind of like knowing each other that well. Yeah. But like this is really good because yeah. again they don't they don't figure it out for like an hour and a half into the movie. Yeah. And he's helping he's helping Peter and Harry get their place in New York. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like there's there's just yeah there's a genuine connection there. Which I gotta say dope apartment mm-hmm. great apartment mm-hmm. absolutely dope apartment mm-hmm. um so wait is the graduation before or after the lucy lawless cameo it's Ooh. right before because okay. my next note is goth lucy lawless uh shaped me as a person yeah man yeah no hey goth lucy Loss- lawless had me feeling some type of way <laughs> some type of way for sure yes and then yeah we get a surprise cameo from jim norton jim too, norton and he's like he's a fucking menace or whatever the fuck he's there should have been one f-bomb in this movie where someone's just like i don't fucking like spider-man um <laughs> i there's one guy in this month that looks like the yeah we have they got motorcycles too <laughs> like, yeah. <there's- laughs> yes he does oh <laughs> uh, yeah they got motorcycles uh but we this is when we are introduced to jk simmons mm-hmm. who to this day i think might be mm-hmm. the finest casting of any comic book film ever hands down guys my note literally says, is J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson the best performance in a comic book movie? Yes. He's incredible. It's stellar. It is stellar. Meat. I'll send you a nice box of Christmas meat. <laughs> that is my favorite line in this whole movie. <laughs> it's so good. Also, I he makes a co- comment here. He's like something about like, you know, it's not a photo of Julia Roberts in a thong. And I'm like, is that supposed to be a reference to something? Or is that just? No, like, you he's, know? he's just talking about like how like it's like sensationalism sells papers also we get Eliz- elizabeth banks is in this mm-hmm. i yeah. forgot she was in these with one of the worst wigs i've ever seen for some reason they were dead set on her and jay jonah jameson looking exactly like their comic book characters yeah <laughs> but there's the direction in the jay jonah jameson scenes is so incredibly tight yes. because it's like it's chaotic like a newspaper office would be, but it also matches his personality like to a T. He's yelling into the phone for Ted Raimi as Ted Raimi's walking on to set. Mm-hmm. Like it's there's some it's so fun. I love all of that shit. All the shit with his wife is calling. Whichever one's cheaper. Yeah, I was going to say, he says, <laughs> your wife said the tile you ordered for the foyer is out of stock. And he says, tell her we'll just put a rug there. <laughs> yeah, <I'm> fucking lost. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I'm fucking lost. <laughs> he's so funny. He's so good. Uh, yeah, that that whole sequence is great, and he decides he's gonna make Spider-Man infamous because mm-hmm. he won't he won't 
talk to the press. He won't pose for pictures. Yep. And this, uh, let's see, the, this is uh, when Peter runs into Mary Jane outside the diner. And they just straight up stop in the middle of the fucking street yeah. to have a conversation. But also... This this insane diner cook that looks like the dude from Attack of the Clones that Kenobi goes to meet comes oh, sure. out screaming about $6. I'm like, are you really going to do this for $6? As someone who worked at a restaurant, I got screamed at over much less. Oh, yeah. I got fired from Dunkin' Donuts for Ugh. paying for my employee meal with my tip money. What? Yeah. Go figure that shit out. Wait, what? That's insane. Yeah, that's insane. You know how it, it, it happened too? This is insane because it's been enough time. Fuck this dude. <laughs> this dude came in, bought the franchise, like the store, because, you know, the, the franchise is anyone can buy or sell them. He came in, bought it, and he wanted to clean house. So mm -hmm. he, had he had it where the camera feed would be rerouted to his house. Damn. So he could see the store from his house. That's psychotic. And uh, you think? And my go-to was always... For my employee meal, I would just take it out of my tip jar because yeah. I would we'd split up at the end of the night and I would always have more than enough to pay for my employee meal. And so uh -huh. I did that. And he's like, no, you stole food. I'm like, the fuck are you talking? You stole fizzy lifting drinks. <laughs> exactly. He, he just wanted to fire everybody. So but after I left. After I left, a lot of people left, yeah. What a dick. It's, it's real shitty. Fuck that dude. Wow. You piece of shit. Way to start the revolution, Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I cried. I cried when I left. Uh, <laughs> it was my first job, really, and I got fired, and I was like, ha, ha. Oh, I, I, yeah. No, I can't imagine I would react any differently. That's so upsetting. I was 16. I was like, what the fuck am I going to do now? <laughs> anyway. I, the, this line, this, the, you know that... You you mentioned that this scene has been memed to death. This is the one meme that drives me fucking crazy. Because it's not accurate. No, yeah, the it's the meme is her saying he said. Yeah. You know whatever. Yeah. And it's like she's in the scene. She's saying, "Yeah, I hear you." Like yeah, it, yeah. it's so it's such a strange. But it is a funny meme though. <laughs> it is. It's a good meme. Look, I, I what can I say? The meme's good. Yeah, it checks out. Turns out it checks out. <laughs> <laughs> Kirsten Dunst in this movie is gorgeous. Like her dimples, even her in her waitress outfit where she's like ashamed. I'm like, you look stunning in this movie. And she's precious in this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And my favorite uh, favorite look of hers in this movie is when we're at the parade, which we're gonna get to here soon. I think she is drop dead gorgeous in this movie. It's insane. She is, but it's a it's an interesting bit of uh, cultural appropriation going yes. on everywhere in this parade. She's in high school, Dustin. <laughs> she's like 30 making this movie. Yeah. <laughs> so so you know <laughs> this was this was actually shot like three weeks before melancholy yeah <laughs> that's not true that's not true um, the uh it does have one of my favorite lines in the movie too and that scene is uh why don't we should get some lunch some evening mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah the we get to the parade we get to macy gray which say, immediately dates this movie which are one of the best quotes of the movie which is let's hear it for macy gray and i wrote down to hell yeah macy gray <laughs> Um, musical guest. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much in this scene that dates the ship. The big one for me is um, the giant uh, on Times Square, the, the singular uh, cell phone company. You guys remember singulars? Oh, cell phones? sure. Yeah. The little orange dude. Is the, I was like, oh, boy. I was expecting to see like Gateway and other kind of like outdated fucking products on those Times Square ads. I love that this scene features a Stan Lee cameo before they became distracting. Yeah. And he, he doesn't do anything. You just, they just made him an extra. Right. He's just a guy running away. Yep. That's it. Yep. It's a blink and you miss it kind of thing. And uh, my next note is a bomb that makes you into bones. <laughs> Why is that the only time he uses that bomb I in this movie? Know. I, don't I don't know. Don't know. He, he stole that technology from the Mars attacks aliens. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I also love that this scene takes so long to actually get going because oh, yeah. the big goblin comes in from like New Jersey <laughs> it's flying over and people see him and like hey what's that and it's just hey. and he's, he's you can hear him cackling 40 miles away and everyone's just like hmm this looks entertaining he should have been throwing money like the Joker yes it's basically the Joker parade that's all it is <laughs> and he has he not only does he have to like do that he comes in glides by and then does a second trip about around again like yeah. a victory lap before he even does anything <laughs> yeah it's insane it's insane he's gotta flex on him first man he's a she's a show exactly you know he had to do it to him he's a show yeah. yeah yeah i think the practical effects of the of the the explosions like making that balcony tip over i think this is all done so well i think the explosions in this movie in general are great which yeah. there's another one coming out that is insane that we have to talk about but <laughs> yeah <laughs> before we get there we gotta talk about harry we never we never talk about this but harry basically taking peter's um when they were at the the field trip and he's like 
oh, did you know this and this and this about sure. the spiders? And then him using that to hit on. And he gets the facts wrong a little mm-hmm. bit, too. Yeah. But then, you know, we get the reveal. That, oh, they've been secretly dating this whole time. And I'm like, oh, dude. And he hasn't told his friend because he's just like swooped in and stolen his girl. Like, or the, he knows that he's crazy about her. Yeah. Ugh. But then he gets he tries to kiss kiss Mary Jane here and gets denied. And I'm like, dude, you got to read the room. Yeah. If that happens, it's 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 over. It's done. It's not good. It's not get good. Get the fuck out. <laughs> But yeah, the, this whole scene is is played insane. There's the skeletons, which we talked about. I'm just, I, I completely forgot that was a thing and lost my mind on the plane. Yeah, it's so great. I woke the guy up next to me. I was like, did you see this shit? <laughs> <laughs> I'll back up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, there's that. There's the child that's ready to die. Oh, my God. Like, what that's... is going on with kids in these Spider-Man movies? They're just so eager to be killed. Yeah. This one, the, 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 doesn't he save a kid from the rhino? Yeah. In Amazing Spider-Man 2. That's and, what I'm saying. Yeah. These kids are just so eager to die. I don't get it. But yeah, then, you know, Peter rescues everybody here as Spider-Man and drops Mary Jane on this roof. Oh, sure. For no, I'm like, how the fuck does she get down from here? I don't even know. She doesn't even know where she lives from there. She doesn't know. There's two people up there that are just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I also love, I actually love the fight with the Green Goblin is really well done. He he has his whole little itsy bitsy spider bit. Oh, it's, he, she, he's you know. chewing the fuck out of this movie, dude. I love it. It's so fun because it's he's so in funny. this little suit and he's got to work through it and he's doing weird things with his posture. Like yeah. he stands kind of like wavy, like he's got a weird, like he like he's got a back brace on. <laughs> Both him and Spider-Man like are face, faceless, expressionless like mass that they wear mm-hmm. and there's still so much personality 100 in both of their performance but yeah the itsy bitsy spider thing is um, incredible <laughs> i love that he oh his little i surrender like oh, that's so that really fun what's he say when he's flying away he's like i'll get you next time spider-man <laughs> he says we'll meet yes this is my next note we'll meet again spider-man that's right we'll it's meet again so <laughs> incredible you and your little dog too. <laughs> it's, it's so that. goofy and i love it it's great it is it fully embraces that kind of like this is a very like 2001 movie 2002 movie but it mm-hmm. it fully embraces the 60s camp in some spots too and i i think it all works really well i'm just now realizing at least twice in this movie, the Green Goblet is introduced to the scene mm-hmm. by exploding a wall out from behind a character yep. because he does it right here with J. Jonah Jameson. And he does it to, to Aunt May. Yep. To, the Aunt May one is the most insane shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. But before we get there, <laughs> before we get there, we get another great J. Jonah Jameson line, which is, I can't, I, it's Peter showing in the f- pictures and he's like, oh, great, we'll put these on the front page. We'll call it, you know, The Menace or whatever. And he's like, Hey, he, he saved those people, and he goes, that, he goes, that's slander. And Jay Chanda goes, slander is spoken, and print, it's libel. And it's so good. <laughs> yeah. He's not wrong. Top tier. Is this the same scene where he says, do you, you don't trust anyone, do you? And he goes, I trust my barber. Yeah. Yep. Oh, that's later on. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Which I gotta say, I mean, his haircut, that's a, that, that fade is, it's a tight fade. The highest and tightest fade I've ever seen on a human being. It's great. Which, wait, did you guys recognize the rooftop? where he drops off MJ after saving her. No. Mm-hmm. It's the same it's the same rooftop from the Daredevil show. That's right. Where Kingpin and Madame Gal talk. That's right. Oh wow. Okay. Right on. Yeah. I do I do remember that, yeah. I, I actually right before this scene we do have James Franco's tiny phone. Yeah. Uh, which was like that Will Ferrell sketch where he yep. just said the little so I want to buy you something. Mm-hmm. And I love the argument we've we've talked about this a little bit, but the the argument between Norman and himself in the mirror yep. is really fun. His little sachet when he's holding the paper uh, is really fun. His, oh, so good. Oh, when he's in the mirror's reflection, he is eating it up, dude. Follow the cold shiver running down your spine. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. Very Sam Raimi. Like it's it's just top tier Sam Raimi. Uh, it's it's lots of canted angles and like mm-hmm. weird. Uh, it's, it's a it's a really fun sequence, and I um. I love, you know, we we all we've seen of Jameson so far is that he's this like money obsessed douchebag. Yep. And when Goblin shows up and threatens him, asks him who takes the pictures of Spider Man, Jameson doesn't sell Peter out. I he noticed the, that he has the guts to just say like they someone mails them in anonymously. I noticed that. I thought it was very very interesting. It's a great character moment. Yeah. I feel like it. It's so at odds with the version of J. Jonah Jameson that's like only obsessed with taking pictures in the third movie mm-hmm. <laughs> to, to the point where he's like buying a disposable camera from a bunch of kids. Mm-hmm. It's a great moment. Then we also get 
the Green Goblin going, sleep, <laughs> sleep. But then he has a line here on this rooftop, which I think is a great scene. Yeah. Even though Defoe is fucking, just, again, hamming it the fuck up. When he smacks Spidey on the back of the head, yep. and does the you, me. <laughs> I fucking loved it. It's so great. He says, he has a line here that says, in spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. And I'm like, this kind of feels like the predecessor of the, uh, you either live long enough to, to you know, to see yourself become the villain or whatever the fuck, you know? Oh, sure. I'm like, that's pretty, pretty close. Sure. And, and in case we missed it, there's a flashback to him saying that in the next scene. Yep. <laughs> we need those flashbacks. Yeah. For sure. Also, I want a newsroom style show about the Daily Bugle. <laughs> oh, my God. I would watch that. Please, God. Aaron Sorkin, where's my, where's my J. Jonah Jameson series? Can you imagine how good that would be? Yeah. A J. Jonah walk and talk. Oh. I would love, even if it was bad i would love it but then we get <laughs> one of the most uh important scenes i think in maybe cinema history and oh. I'm, I'm bold enough to say that wow which is peter rescuing mj from the thugs in the rain oh sure from the thug that just growls at her yes <laughs> <laughs> this was a weird thing in superhero movies around this time where we kept having a sequence where the hero shows that they're a hero by averting a, a sexual assault. Yep. <laughs> like there, this happens in this also happens in Ghost Rider. Batman Returns. It happens in yes. Well, the early two thousands were a different time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a weird moment, but yeah. Everything about this scene worked so fucking well for me. I mean yeah. the fact that Peter's got the mask like ripped in half when when he lays down the final thug and you get that over the shoulder of MJ seeing him and he's just barely in the shadow yeah and you can you can tell it's Toby but like she obviously couldn't as and he's just standing there in the rain yeah feels right out of a comic panel yeah. it's incredible yes it's really great him dipping into the shadows it's like holy shit this is intense dude and it's as good as the scene is I'm also having a, I have a hard time because she just talked to Peter and her not recognizing that it's him or yeah I do like that Peter does Peter's spider Spider-Man voice uh, is sort of like what a kid would think a superhero would sound like. Hello, ma'am. I'm here to rescue you. It's kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I really enjoy that. I <laughs> and he but he kind of lets it go a little bit here. A and little I think bit. that's an interesting moment. But also the upside down kiss. Very impractical. Yes. Impractical. But dude, it's it's genuinely a great shot. And it's it, iconic. And iconic. It's, it's undeniably iconic. Except for the last bit where she just like licks his chin hey man well there was water dripping on it she's thirsty that's a choice I, kirsten dunce could do that to me i'm not gonna complain <laughs> <laughs> well yeah because you'd have hot chocolate dripping down yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i no, i i love I, I also it's it's funny because he you know when he talks about when toby mcguire talks about shooting the scene he's just like I, this was not fun for me oh no they both said it was miserable no upside down with the rain going up your nose yeah. that sounds fucking terrible and you can t the every vein in his neck is sticking out his like throat is so red it's still a great it's still great it's still great <laughs> like you know there's a take where they're kissing and he just starts coughing water <laughs> into her mouth <laughs> no the result is one of the most a, a, a perfect scene that could only only work for a spider-man movie yes. also like it's it's great yeah this wouldn't work with batman <laughs> no but also he's basically just being waterboarded no because batman would complain about vicky vale's weight which he does yep. in batman 89 yep. yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know what's more believable that peter doesn't realize that mj is so clearly into him in this movie yeah or that mj doesn't know peter is spider-man because it's they both seem blatantly obvious on this rewatch it is it is one of those very like selective realism comic book things you yeah. gotta go with like that's true you know it's it's the it's the clark kent putting on glasses of it all you yeah, know? yeah yeah <laughs> then we get <laughs> the, the the building on fire scene yeah which is great because i love that like he rescues that baby and then the cops like you're under arrest and they hear another voice and he's like well you will you come back here i'm arresting you and he's and my friend's like the fuck i'm not coming back i'm not coming back chief <laughs> yeah on the plane, I forgot about the scene. Oh. And the Green Goblin dressed as an old lady. <laughs> yeah. That little scream is so good. I I lost I oh my god, I lost it. <laughs> maybe 
maybe the scampiest move of the whole movie. Oh, it is. It 100% is. This is the sc- he's the sc- he is definitely the scampiest like the one in the movie and this is yeah, this scene solidifies the scampiness of him. Holy shit. He he's so good and I love I love that they're quipping at each other. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's so cheesy, but the you're the one you're out Gobby out of your mind is great. You're fucking out. You're fucking <laughs> out Gobby. But no, I I mean, again, this movie is just iconic scene after iconic scene because yeah. right before this we had the upside down kiss. Here we've got the him in slow motion dodging the the green goblin blade things. Yeah, which is so fucking cool. It's so good. It's great and they nail Spider-Man's physicality in mm-hmm. these movies. Like the that that pose in midair might as well have been drawn by like Todd McFarlane. Like it's mm-hmm. so fucking rad. But also, I I know this is like one of those movies that everyone just looks down upon. But like you guys know the guys that make like all those movies are like date movie and epic movie and all that shit. Sure. The one they did for with um, Drake Bell for superhero movie mm. genuinely was pretty fucking funny. And they, was it? They did this scene. That's gonna be a big doubt for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> they did this scene, and except it's Drake Bell as his superhero and he hits he gets hit by every single one of them <laughs> so he, he tries to dodge over they all oh so it's me as a superhero cool oh yeah. <laughs> i i at least i mean leslie nielsen's in that one so you get you get some good stuff so oh, okay yeah i am an i am a nielsen completist so yeah, it's not it's not bad i'll say that does that mean you can only come if you put on the naked gun that's correct <laughs> and uh you know, it's so funny i was thinking about this uh oh no it was i was i've been re-listening to james bonding and they talked about Leslie Nielsen at one point. And they're like, isn't it wild that like the ho- that the Zuckers stopped making Naked Gun movies, but Leslie Nielsen didn't stop making Naked Gun movies? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we always have um, there's there's Christmas movies is Die Hard a Christmas movie or whatever. Uh, no one's talking about the real thing. This, this is a Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving movie. <laughs> yeah. Nobody talks about it. This one is this is your Thanksgiving movie right here. Yeah. Oh my God. Is this episode dropping the week of Thanksgiving? Uh, it might. Let me look. That's actually that's Holy actually shit. a good <laughs> point. I think it is actually. Let me look. All right. What is more upsetting? Putting his fingers in the casserole. I'll do that. I'll go ahead and tell you it's that. Or <laughs> Denethor eating the tomato <laughs> in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Well, I mean, that depends the on... The tomatoes. The tomato. No, it's definitely the tomato. <laughs> it's the tomato still, I think. Well, the tomato's more erotic, isn't oh, it? No. No, it's not. <laughs> he sucks his fingers in this movie, Nathan. He's like, oh, 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 this tomato. It's a cherry tomato, too, I know. isn't it? He knew what he was doing. <laughs> he knew what he was doing. Um, also, yes, this episode drops the week of Thanksgiving. So you're welcome, audience. That's <laughs> fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Aunt May doesn't put up with his shit at all. And, she, and he licks every one of his fingers for some reason. He does. Yeah. It, I don't. It's it's weird. Well, and I do like that the goblin is starting to like assert himself more. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, there's this is clearly like the middle ground. Ah, so it was the goblin licking Norman's fingers. Yeah, yeah. hot, which is erotic. They're best friends. <laughs> this is what like an hour and a half into the movie, and yeah. this is just now where and it's, I like that it's the villain who puts it together. Yes, that Peter is Spider Man, and not both at the same time. Like Peter doesn't realize it's Willem Dafoe until the very end of the movie. Yeah, like that's incredible. And for him to figure it out and being like, you know, uh, he's like, I got to go. And he just but then before he goes, he has he delivers one of the harshest lines in the movie. Ooh, yeah, I, I I so feel bad for MJ because she really wants to make an impression to Norman. And he tells Harry to broom her. That's that's the line. He says, do what you're going to do with her and then broom her fast. I'm like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. Like he's he says something about a girl. What do you think a girl like that wants from you? Like, yeah, it's, exactly. oh, it's so mean. You, yeah, you, you, you stick with them long enough and then they're going after your bank account or whatever. Yeah. And then Harry not saying shit about it. And yep. I like that Aunt May calls him out, too, about him like Harry Osborne. Yeah. <laughs> great it's a great performance because she tells he tells mj to shut up yeah. about things she doesn't understand yeah <laughs> yeah shut up you don't know what you're talking about that's my father but it's fine he's a nice guy oh, he's such, such a, a nice such guy, nice guy. kind of relating to your point about like norman figuring out they do kind of something similar in homecoming yeah, yeah. with michael keaton which i will say that's my favorite part of homecoming Me too. i didn't love that movie yeah. but that whole sequence oh when michael keaton's driving him to the thing and he's, yeah it's the most tense moment in the entire film yeah. and it's just two guys in a car having a conversation not no 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 not two guys an older man and a child yes, yes. and he's like i will murder you <laughs> i will kill you and everyone you love yes that scene's great well and there's also like the brilliance of like in the 
background, like whenever he figures it out, you see the light go from red to green. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Subtle, cheesy, but I fucking love it. I love yep. it too. Uh, speaking of cheesy, we got to talk about this Lord's Prayer scene. <sighs> it's <laughs> finish it. It may, it may, I'm going to be controversial here. It may be the best scene of any movie of all time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what? It is. It's perfect. <laughs> what an intense thing to say. If I was a film instructor, this would be a scene I teach in film school. I'm not even kidding. This is perfect cinema. Deliver us. I'm so glad you're not a teacher. Holy shit. <laughs> the explosion <laughs> is so fucking. Cr it, it. I mean, we just had this with J. Jonah Jameson. Uh -huh. All right, kids. So every good scene starts with an explosion. Yeah. An explosion uh, behind an old woman. Course instructor is Michael Bay, of course. But no, I mean, we just did this scene and somehow they outdo it again because when it, it there is no warning on this explosion it just it's a jump scare basically yeah and then it makes no sense because how the fuck would the green goblin even know she was giving the lord's prayer rosemary harris is fucking oh my god she's act she is doing it up in this scene she really from is. evil from <laughs> evil she might as well be mermaid man from spongebob <laughs> like it's insane the, the <laughs> The implication is that he just scared her so much. I, like, I love it. Because when she's like, oh, those eyes, those horrible yellow eyes. I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> I feel like any other movie would have been like, oh, she had a heart attack or something. Mm -hmm. But this one, it's literally just like the Green Goblin is so fucking scary that she yes. had to go to the hospital. <laughs> yes. This is also the woman that in the next movie will beat Doc Ock with an umbrella. Yes. <laughs> like, oh, my God. The bank scene uh, is the best. Oh, it's incredible. But yeah, so we get the, the Lord's Prayer, she's in the hospital, and then that's when Peter figures it out. Like, whoever the Green Goblin is, he knows that I am Spider-Man. He knows who I am. Yeah. yeah. We get the Superman line, which is a fantastic line. Yeah. It's great. And I, I love, again, I love that scene between Peter and MJ where he tells her. It's so, it's so emotional. It's so emotional, but then it has that great little laugh line at the end where she goes, you really said that about me? And he says, I mean, it's something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> it's after delivering good. this beautiful monologue. Yeah. Yeah. It's genuine. And Tobey Maguire, I get, people don't really give him that much credit. He's fucking great in these movies like yeah. even the third one where it's not a good movie he's fucking going for it oh, yeah without a doubt he's really dialed in yeah he was the right person at this time to play peter parker absolutely. I, I completely believe that yeah absolutely Did we get <laughs> another great green goblin line where he's on the payphone <laughs> yeah. and he gets can spider-man come out to play <laughs> so good it's so hammy it's so good so creepy but then again another iconic fucking shot is the Green Goblin having so he's kidnapped MJ. He's got the the kids on the um whatever whatever you call it the gondola or whatever, mm -hmm. and he goes to drop them both. And then you get almost like the Matrix shot of like yeah. one in one eye. It's it's in the trailer too. It's a great fucking shot. It's great. It's, great. it's a great shot. And the I appreciate the, the 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 balls that this movie has to basically say. We're going to do the night Gwen Stacy died, mm -hmm. yeah. but we're going to up the ante and Spider-Man's going to fucking win. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think that it's so it's so ballsy. It's, it's incredible, which I mean, I will say, like, if it's me, you know, fuck the kids. I'm saving MJ. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> which I will. I do have to give credit to Amazing Spider-Man 2. The one thing I like about that movie is that they had the fucking balls to go for it. Yeah. Yes. With that end. That's the only good part of that movie to me is is that and the Times Square stuff is the only good part of those movies. The crushing thing about about Gwen's death in Spider-Man 2 or in Amazing Spider-Man 2 is that she is because we we all know Emma Stone's great, yeah, mm -hmm. and she she plays the 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 I mean, drama of that. I mean, just look at her. <laughs> she the, she plays the drama of that situation really well. But every time she falls in that sequence, she's not screaming because she knows he's gonna catch her every time. Yeah. yeah, and that 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 is the most. I think that's a brilliant move. Like I, in which he does catch her. Yes, technically he catches her. Yeah. He does. He does <laughs> technically catch her. I think the first the first 10 minutes of that movie and the last 10 minutes of that movie are 
impeccable yes i agree it, it also like as dustin said the Times square thing like yep. spider-man putting on the firefighter's helmet mm-hmm. and going for the hose is fucking amazing <laughs> oh that's great that that movie has glimpses of goodness in it yes. and the rest is just you can put it right in the garbage disposal they just they needed to either they needed to pick electro or harry osborne mm-hmm. they needed to pick one yeah i don't there's maybe a handful of, of superhero movies that have more than one villain that actually work yeah probably on probably on one hand i could count them well so. I, you know what i I, I gotta say about I, I know I know I keep going off on weird little Andrew Garfield tangents, but sure. <laughs> by the time this episode drops, maybe we'll have another No Way Home trailer. Mm-hmm. But all I, I I will say that like I think he's a fucking genius mm-hmm. because one I th- he, I think he's a great actor. I genuinely always enjoy him. Yeah. He's good, but I will also say that like he's clearly been told by Disney to deny being in this movie Mm -hmm. this next movie as hard as he can and so he's using that to publicly air all of his grievances with with working on those movies yeah Uh uh-huh i fucking love it talking about how like how capitalism is like the end of everything Mm -hmm. how they wouldn't let him explore you know peter's uh sexuality in the movies because they and and like made him like publicly retract his statements so that they could he's like basically like oh you want bigots to buy tickets to your movies like again i'll say it i don't like amy pascal at all yeah i think she's terrible no but it's it's a wild i just love that he's taking this opportunity i mean it'd be like if michael keaton had been told don't tell anyone you're in the flash Mm -hmm. and so he spent like two years of marketing of interviews just being like you know what batman sucks i fucking hate that suit (laughs) i've had it i do like tover grace has been giving pretty good uh responses to about whether or not he'll be in oh i haven't seen that yeah they're pretty good but yeah, we got this final fight between the Green Goblin and Spider-Man. Oof. I think this fight scene is actually genuinely really good for even like a superhero movie. Oh, yeah. It's insanely violent, too. Spider-Man gets the shit beat out of him. Spider-Man getting his face blown half off. <laughs> yeah. Is, that shot is so fucking good because in slow-mo, you see Tobey Maguire, like his whole face retract when that explosion goes off. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. It's really fucking good. This movie also, like, between this and, like, the the first X-Men movie, I feel like really set us up for big third act fights mm-hmm. in superhero movies. So I remember when, when Iron Man came out, I was so disappointed that the fight with Iron Monger is, like, three minutes long. Yeah. I was like, wait, hang on. I, I'm so used to seeing... Norman Osborn and and Peter Parker beating the shit out of each out of each other for like ten minutes. I'm used to watching the X Men climb the Statue of Liberty. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. like, well, I like in this fight scene, I feel the weight of every single punch. Yes, and every single wall that they get thrown into. It's personal. And a movie that I really enjoy, but has none of that, is. Uh, Dark Knight Rises. When Batman comes back to fight Bane, yeah. it all feels plastic. Like, I feel nothing. Well, I I, th- I think the action is one of the weakest parts of that trilogy. Because I, I, I love Christopher Nolan, but Nolan, he's not great at shooting action. No. Yeah. Although, I do love the first fight with Batman and Bane. Oh, where Batman's not getting any fucking hits in? <laughs> yes. And no, like, there's no score. Right. Oh. It's it's dark. It's good. It's dark. I like the fight on the docks in Batman Begins a lot because uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's shot weirdly, but it's also very much like, oh, Batman's a force of nature. Mm-hmm. He yeah. just kind of comes in and you can't really tell what's happening and that's kind of the point. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you can't, you can't build a whole trilogy off of what the fuck did he just do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we get um, the reveal that Peter finds out that Green Goblin is Norman mm-hmm. with great, great performance by Defoe. Yeah. And like, and I like that Tobey Maguire's, you know, Peter Parker is just like, you killed so many people. You tried to kill Aunt May. You tried to kill MJ. He's like yeah. trying to make it make sense for himself. Yeah. And in and, and Norman, I think, I think Defoe really plays that duality well, where mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of hard to tell if maybe he meant some of this. Like, I'm sorry. I don't think he, is it, I interpret this. I don't think he does. On this rewatch, I interpret it as, that's the Green Goblin posing as Norman. And I think that Norman comes back when he says, don't tell Harry. Yes, I agree. So good. That's a great final line. Holy shit. The weight of that. And then this whole death is incredible because it's like he tries to the Im- O. Impel- yeah, the O is incredible because they drop all the sound out. And he's like, oh, oh. <laughs> Godspeed, Spider-Man. Godspeed, Spider-Man's fucking great. <laughs> that line rules. So good. Yeah. But then 
it's also it kind of doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because it's like if if he did impale Spider Man, I'm pretty sure he would also impale himself. Yeah, in this yeah. he gets stabbed moment. in the dick. Yeah, right in the dick. That, those blades go through his dick. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, don't tell Harry. Oof. Yeah. Just from Peter's point of view, this is a lot. Yeah. I mean, this movie is not without like a lot of darkness to it because like, of course, you got the Uncle Ben stuff. You get this here. You get his friendship with Harry being ruined basically at the end becoming Spider-Man is tied to everything going wrong for him yep. the worst thing that ever happened to him was becoming Spider-Man and I think that's the right move it's incredibly it's incredibly smart the fact that he walks away from MJ at the end of this movie is the smartest thing they could have done yeah absolutely 100% I mean the man broke up with a girl at a cemetery yeah, yeah. well didn't even break up they were never together true yeah. she confesses her love to him which yeah. The whole movie, you're like, he's going to confess his love to her. She says it to him, and he's like, I can't do it. Yeah. Flipped it on him. Like, the weight of all that. Yeah. Oh, uh, when he says, I, I will be there for you forever, and I will take care of you, and then dot, 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 as, as a friend. A friend. He, holy shit. Oof. <laughs> To see Kirsten Stewart, uh, Kirsten Stewart, Kirsten what? Dunst's reaction to that. Yeah, I know. I, I teared up. I was like, holy shit. I feel so bad. She's <laughs> really good in this scene. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, it ends us on a the, my last note is shit's bleak, man. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> well, one of my last notes is uh, Ben Parker's tombstone does not have a birth year or a death year on it. It just says Ben Parker. <laughs> well, Ben Parker was a Highlander. That's, oh, uh, yeah, that's right. He lives forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's everyone knows that. <laughs> what we didn't see was Sandman coming back and taking his head. And, and then it's all pretty much CG, but this mm -hmm. ending of him being like, who am I? I'm Spider-Man. And then him just swinging through the city with this most operatic music is it's great. both impressive and like uplifting because, oh, the superhero is here to save the day. But it's also like, this is dark as fuck. Like yeah. how alone he is. Like they show him like swinging above the buildings, coming down to the streets a little bit. And then like on the flagpole and stuff, it's like, dude, he's, that's what it emphasizes to me is he has no one now. Yes. He's alone. It's him. It's just him. And the thing that I love about this, and I, I mean this as a compliment, it feels very much like a theme park ride in this shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you are following along with him. The camera is swooping through the buildings. And there's... Oh, it's like the Universal Studios, like Back to the Future thing where you sit in the car yes. and you go through. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it feels like. Oh, uh, it rules. I, I love it so much. It, it is, it's perfect. I've seen the scene a thousand times. I've heard the score a thousand times. It's still jaw dropping to me, like how incredible this finale is to this movie. Yeah. The only thing that ruins it oh. is the fucking Nickelback song. Ah, uh, I'm so high <laughs> it's terrible i can hear him but also what a time to be alive no end credit scene right you get the fuck out of there the movie's over go home it's refreshing it is ref i was so relieved there was nothing after the credits i yeah. was like oh thank god no spider-man will return nothing <laughs> just you, we're done spider-man will return in spider pussy in thunderball oh <laughs> ah, yours was better <laughs> and that's it dude that's the movie yeah harry swears that he'll make spider-man pay for what he did to his father I swear on my father's grave yeah yeah he's real bad in this scene real bad franco is so funny fucking bad in the scene uh, he's 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 dead behind the eyes and yeah i will spider-man will pay i swear on my father's grave I swear on my father's grave spider-man Spider will, Spider will pay <laughs> yeah it's real bad well okay is there anything else about the movie in particular we want to talk about before we get to the wrap-up stuff no i i've got some stuff on the the long road to getting spider-man made if you oh, guys yeah. want to go get into that yeah 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 let's let's do that now so uh, a couple years back i wrote uh, at aiptcomics.com we had a uh, spectacular spider month which was celebrating the release of uh, spider-man far from home mm -hmm. and so i dug into the history of unmade spider-man films in a, in a two-part a uh, series of articles called The Unproduced Web of Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And I, I found a bunch of weird shit. There was so much stuff that I like ended up only covering like half of the movies that didn't get made. Okay. But basically the road to getting Spider-Man on the big screen started in 1976. I believe that. Yeah. A producer called uh, named Steve Krantz, who was a producer on the 1967 cartoon series, wanted to make a TV movie musical out of the night Gwen Stacy died. <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> Which would have included a scene where Spider-Man fights a giant Nazi robot. Ah, oh, of course. Okay, and, I'm back uh, in. <laughs> for obvious reasons, it, I'm back in. it didn't happen. 
but the the first real serious attempt at making it uh start happened in 1982 when roger corman got the rights to it and you know roger corman famous schlock master um wanted stan lee to write the screenplay and stan's pitch involved dr octopus as the main villain but it would have been way too expensive to make so they kind of just like the the light the rights lapsed again and in 1985 the rights to spider-man the movie were bought by canon films oh no shit i would have paid all the money to see a canon films produce spider-man oh yeah i mean the folks who brought us you know many a chuck norris vehicle many a ninja film uh the the break-in series 1985 toby hooper was attached to make spider-man why i i I gotta say there is something to be said with getting all these horror directors to make these big epic movies like with peter jackson and lord of the rings and shit yes Uh, something about it fucking works yeah and well this and what was weird was it was bought by a series of people who didn't understand or refused to do any research Mm -hmm. uh, into the characters so the screenplay for the toby hooper version was written by leslie stevens and it would have involved peter parker uh being mutated into a half man half spider monster by the evil dr zork is david cronenberg behind this one (laughs) jesus christ so and he would have fought like a bunch of other mutants yeah so eventually they're like this isn't working toby hooper quits and joseph zito joins the director of such films as friday the 13th the final chapter and the original maniac Mm. this would have been another dr octopus story um, but another and it looked like it was going to work for a little while. Um, and some of the uh, actors that were being courted for the project included Tom Cruise as Spider-Man. Nope. Uh, Bob Hoskins as Dr. Octopus. Yes. And Stan Lee <laughs> as J. Jonah Jameson. Oh, <laughs> I kind of like that. Which I kind of <laughs> love that. But so they brought another writer in to like jazz up the project. And he had a lot of really interesting notes like. Why isn't why don't we call him Professor Octopus, which I think is a really necessary change. Yeah. Um, And can (laughs) can Professor Octopus have a sidekick named Wiener? Yep. And uh, and can Professor Octopus's uh, catchphrase be okie dokie? So he says it like a (laughs) thousand times in the script. Is this this the same guy that wanted to name Back to the Future Spaceman from Pluto or whatever? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Um, So then then that eventually falls apart and canon goes to like one of their go to guys, Albert Pion, who would eventually go on to make that 1990 version of captain america with Mm -hmm. like that has like the rubber ears on the suit Mm -hmm. and he wanted to make a movie with the lizard as the main villain and they were they built they had this interesting idea where they were going to try to fast track both spider-man and a sequel to their masters of the universe movie uh that they would shoot at the same time Hmm. uh, because they were about to lose the rights for both of them and their all of their checks were bouncing Hmm. (laughs) so the idea was um we built they built all of these new york city sets for spider-man and they made all these costumes for masters of the universe 2 and according to albert pion the concept was to shoot two weeks of spider-man uh, the section of the story before Peter Parker was bitten. And then while while he bulked up and trained for six weeks, they'd shoot Masters of the Universe 2. And then once they were done with that, they bring yeah, they were just trying to like knock both of these out for a tiny budget. Yeah. And this is the most insane thing. They lose the rights to both properties because they're not they're not able to make their payments to Marvel or Mattel. Yeah. So the what they do is they go to the director and they say, hey, um, we have all these New York sets and we have all of these weird uh, costumes for Masters of the Universe. Can you make us a movie with these? (laughs) And so he goes and over the weekend writes the screenplay for Cyborg, the Jean-Claude Van Damme film. Mm. So they burned all the New York sets and then just made this post-apocalyptic movie (laughs) with the leftovers of those other two movies. Hell yeah. Around this time, Carol Co films gets the uh the rights and uh, a young james cameron is brought on to uh write a treatment and possibly direct i remember that yeah his version of the movie would be in no uncertain terms the horniest superhero movie ever made i'm about it he came up <laughs> with the idea of peter having organic web shooters um and there was a sequence where he discovers his powers when he wakes up stuck to his sheets <laughs> like he thinks he's had a wet dream i'm gonna send you guys their oh, storyboards no. and like concept art for this oh, oh no, no. Uh, <laughs> sending it
it to you now. Oh no, I'm gonna put you put on a watch list. Oh my <laughs> god, that's real. That's real, and we should post it with this. You know what? I ca- I kind of like it. His movie would have been <laughs> hardcore rated R. Peter is constantly dropping the f bomb in this in this treatment. Mm. Um, in one of the weirdest bits of the movie, he climbs on the wall outside of Mary Jane's bedroom and watches her undress. Oh boy! There was an extended sequence of Peter explaining spider mating rituals to her and actually like dancing around her like a spider. Uh... Followed by a bondage style love scene where he webbed her to the Brooklyn Bridge and the two had sex while he kept his mask on i I'd, this is all real uh, i'd i'd watch it <laughs> <laughs> i'm just just saying i'd watch it uh, uh yeah i mean uh, it's a fascinating what if like over the years uh, and while he was working on this yeah, marvel get on this what if james cameron spider-man <laughs> <laughs> season two let's go baby <laughs> like at, at one point he was talking with eddie furlong about playing spider-man at one point it that. was leo dicaprio attached what yeah just very strange why not eddie furlong i could see uh I always get the two confused. Emil Hirsch, I could see as a Spider-Man. Oh, that would be interesting. Um, And then for a hot minute, David Fincher was attached Mm -hmm. and he wanted to do the night Gwen Stacy died. And his idea was the first 10 minutes of the movie are like a um, operatic oneer where I go through the entire origin of Spider-Man before the opening credits. Okay. And then we just jump into him having adventures, which I kind of love. That's That's one of my favorite things about MCU Spider-Man is we... We get the deal. We know who Spider-Man is. We don't need any of that shit anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that eventually also fell apart, clearing the way for Sam Raimi. <laughs> but man, what a fucking ride. That's insane. There's uh, and if you guys want to check out those 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 uh, articles, I also get into like the unmade Amazing Spider-Man spinoffs. We almost got an Aunt May solo film. That's insane. That's bananas. <laughs> There's uh, an early version of Venom, which was called Venom Carnage. Not just that. Just those two words, not a versus in the title. So it's like WandaVision. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort Venom of. Carnage. Venom Carnage. <laughs> Uh yeah, some weird shit. Has anybody seen Venom 2? No. No. Okay. I have uh I've read a lot about it, but I have not seen it. <laughs> we we got the best first Spider-Man movie, I think. Agreed. Well, alright, guys, let's talk about Prop Cop. And that is, of course, for new listeners, where we look at all the props that are in Spider-Man from 2002, mm-hmm. all of the props, all the wardrobe, anything that's tangible, and uh, we pick one for ourselves. So, uh, Nathan, this was your pick. Yeah. You get to go first. What do you want from Spider-Man? I want one of those uh, bone saws that they have in the crowd. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> there was like no other choice for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, Mally? I want that Thanksgiving turkey. It does look delicious. <laughs> that one that's clearly plastic. That's the one you want. That <laughs> shit looked delicious. That shit looks so fake. <laughs> I'll eat plastic. I don't care, man. It looked well seasoned. <laughs> I actually want the uh, the sketch that Peter does of the spider suit, like oh, the yeah, final version great. of it. I think that would be cool to have framed, framed in my house. Okay. Well, what about the uh, bit part? Yeah. That is, of course, where we look at all the extras, all the featured extras, anybody in the background a non-named character, and we say, hey, we're, we're going to replace that person with us so we can be in this movie. Uh, who would we pick? So, uh, Mally, let's start with you. Who do you want to be? Oh, I would like to be the wrestler screaming about not being able to feel his legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That one's good. All right. I I want to be... Um, the guy similar in the same scene mm-hmm. there's a guy when the when the cage starts to come down this one guy in the crowd loses his mind and just goes cage <laughs> <laughs> i want to be that guy <laughs> that's me when i see nicolas cage in a movie <laughs> that you're, that's the leo dicaprio meme for you of pointing <laughs> yeah, at the tv cage. <laughs> every time fiamma's like you put pig on you knew he was in this <laughs> <laughs> and you don't have to do it for every scene we get it he's in the movie uh who do you want to be nathan um so i was stuck between a couple I, I at first I wanted to be the bus driver who is clearly making fun of Peter, mm-hmm. um, but I think I want to be the jetpack test pilot who gets blown up by Green Goblin. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good. One. I, my also my backup was gonna be the little kid Billy that almost gets crushed by the the sign that That's Spider-Man good. space. Yeah, but I want to be full fully grown up. <laughs> uh, in that scene, there's an extra that gets like wiped out by mm-hmm. a lamppost. Mm-hmm. That when that lamp comes down on his head, it's wild. <laughs> All right. Well, the uh, the moment of truth, mm-hmm. silver lining. Uh, I will let you guys go first because I just realized I do not have one. Oh boy, <laughs> I did not write one down. 
That's always the thing I do last, and I always forget. So uh, when do you guys go first? <laughs> I mean, the people that Peter loves are safe. Yeah. Even if he has to keep them at arm's length. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, Malik? Yeah. <laughs> the lab avoided the fuck out of a lawsuit. Oh, my Peter God. Because Peter could have sued the fuck out of him. Oh, that's my a great God. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just letting that spider run around willy-nilly. Yeah, like, you. how do you lose a fucking super... Spider, you have what one job? Well, I like that MJ points it out too. He's like, "Oh, there's there's only 24." You said there was 25, and she's like, "Huh." Hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I guess the researchers have that one. Yeah, it's the, no, look into that yeah. immediately. That shot of the fangs going into Peter's hand is fucking Ugh. visceral. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a, that was another note I wrote down. I was like, "Dude, you got to tell someone about this bite." Like, it's getting it's <laughs> getting just, real big. It's like, did you guys you guys saw Candy Man, right? It's like you got to tell somebody <laughs> right. about that bite. <laughs> you have holes in your neck. <laughs> <laughs> hmm silver lining um wow this is weird usually i'm the one sitting here trying to think of one at the end <laughs> well, I've, got, I've got a couple rolling around in here I, none of them are good i'm trying to think if there's like a good one mm. no, like the one i'm thinking of right now is mary jane uh still got to keep her job waiting tables even after that six dollar snafu there you go so there's that <laughs> Because I, I like that Peter, even Peter was like, she goes, yeah, I know it's some life I'm living, huh? He's like, you should be proud. You have a job. Yeah. I'm like, see, that's that's good. So that's how I felt about it, too. It's like, who cares if you're $6 short? Peter and Harry have a few months rent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Harry's going to be doing great after this, by the way. Yeah, Holy yeah. shit. The the inheritance. Yeah. Oh, we also, we didn't talk about it, but their butler that shows up in these movies, too, is great. Boy, he's he's got a, he's got quite a monologue in the third movie. Yeah, he's got a very specific kind of delivery <laughs> in his, uh, his acting performance. It's very unique. I love your father. Yeah. <laughs> he was a good man, Harry. The, I dressed his <laughs> wounds that night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's my silver lining. That's good. <laughs> So what about uh, Double Feature, where we, um, if, you know, if you watch Spider-Man, you're like, guys, this ending is just, it's too depressing. Mm -hmm. I need something more upbeat, more positive. We give you a double feature of a movie you watch afterwards. I'll go last. Okay. Oh, boy. Go ahead, Nathan. So I, I, I know I've mentioned it a few times, and it's not necessarily uh, happier than this one, but it is bug nuts insane. Check out Dark Man mm -hmm. for Sam Raimi's first spin at directing a superhero movie, because it is wild. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. If you like some of the, the creepier, weirder editing choices in this movie, then mm -hmm. Dark Man is a real fun time. I think you should watch Antichrist with Blown Up Now. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Shadow of the Vampire. <laughs> it also kind of ends a little, uh, uh, ends a little bit dour, like this movie does, and mm -hmm. we actually even considered doing it for this episode. But I think you got to keep it going. Go into Spider Man Two, man. Yeah. Keep this train rolling. Like even though these movies are kind of dark at the end, they are a lot of fun. Yeah. And so I think Spider Man Two will it would just you know seal the deal for you. It's so good. It's so fucking good. So good. I think I'm gonna rewatch it either tonight or tomorrow night. Like yeah. I'm, I can, I need to now. Mally, what about you? Oh boy. Prepare yourself, audience. <laughs> so, you know, Peter Parker is trying to do a lot in this movie. Uh -huh. While with balancing his personal life and his Spider-Man life, uh -huh. you could almost say he's trying to ice skate uphill. Uh -huh. <laughs> so go watch Blade. Yeah. yeah. Where it started it all for Marvel. Yep. It really did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, before this, the biggest theatrical release Marvel had had was Howard the Duck. Mm -hmm. And then that did so badly, it took like a decade before Blade. Mm -hmm. I mean, Blade literally saved them from oh, yeah. financial bankruptcy. Blade rules. So yeah. I rewatched that recently. And I actually, I think the sequel's even better. Like, I, I think Blade 2 is so fun. Oh, Blade 2 is so good. Yeah. My first R-rated movie in the theater. Blade 3 is not good yeah Blade three has parker posey going for it though at least and a lot of ryan reynolds I, ryan reynolds is fun in that movie i'm not gonna lie <laughs> he's a he's a lot yeah yeah well guys i know the answer already but i have to ask do we recommend spider-man from 2002 hell yes yeah dude fuck yeah i mean why wouldn't you recommend blade <laughs> <laughs> like i know i know spider-man 2 gets a lot of praise and rightfully so it is one of the definitive superhero movies of all time but this is the template man like this, i think this yeah. is slept on so hard yeah like it's a it's defining it's a defining moment in movie history like I agree. undeniably this yeah. movie was huge it was massive yeah and if you enjoy the mcu if you enjoy any of the dc stuff you have this movie to thank for it like this mm -hmm. movie was the template like I, I, x-men was like um if wes craven's new nightmare was x-men then this was scream like yeah you know what I mean? like they oh i love that it with this movie well yeah and even then like the next year x-men 2 had to like up the ante mm -hmm. because of spider-man yeah exactly 
Well, yeah, if you uh, if you disagree, if you think Spider-Man fucking sucks, or if you agree with us and you're like, hey guys, Spider-Man, you, you hit the nail on the head with this one, you can send your feedback in to us at the Silver Linings Playlist at gmail.com, or you can DM us over on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Just search for the Silver Linings Playlist and you'll find us. And you can also check out our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Uh, if you have a suggestion for a movie you think we should do on the show, you can let us know about that as well. Uh, and we ask that you uh, please tell your friends and family and coworkers and everyone within earshot about our show. Because the best thing you can do for us is just word of mouth. Definitely. And uh, the second best thing you can do is subscribe if you haven't already. You get you know notifications the second an episode drops. And we only have a few more for this season. In fact, I'm going to look it up. I think we only have like five more. Something like that before we take our break um i mean if your best friend's father dies play this episode at his funeral mm -hmm. i agree yeah we have uh we have five episodes left for the season wow. so it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be wrapping up real quickly but i promise you every episode we got coming up is a fucking banger absolutely and speaking of that uh i have a clue for what we're gonna, gonna be talking about next week are you guys ready yeah well actually you know what before we do that guys i gotta tell you a little bit about myself <laughs> Uh, Ever since I was a boy, mm -hmm. I hate and fear little rooms, caves, and closets. I'm terrified. <laughs> Just so you guys know. But yeah. I'm claustrophobic is what I'm trying to say. It's good to know. I thought you said little runes, and I was like, <laughs> oh shit, Halloween 6 revisited. The power of the runes. We're going back to where it all started. Halloween 6 again. We're re-upping. No. 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 Little rooms. I'm terrified. So that's all. I just need you guys to know that. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else we want to talk about before we get out of here for the week? This was a delight. I'm yeah. so excited to, to revisit. I'm, I'm glad I had a chance to rewatch it. Yeah, me too. I want some turkey. You know what? This week is Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Hope you have a good one. Happy Thanksgiving. Nah, no happy Thanksgiving. That's a stupid fucking holiday. I disagree. And Enjoy eating. Yeah, that's that's the best part. Enjoy eating and starting your Christmas festivities. Don't do it before or you're an asshole. That's right. <laughs> Um, I say that as my wife is currently putting up our Christmas tree and it's the my middle wife. of November. Yeah, my wife. <laughs> God <laughs> damn it, Priscilla. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, first of all, rest in peace, Oatmeal mm -hmm. and Norman Osborne. Yeah. <laughs> and as always. Oh, happy birthday, moms. And moms and, and grads and dads and everybody. Thanks, else. everyone. Yeah. As always, we'll meet again, Spider-Man. In this sea that a hero <laughs> <can> save us. <laughs> Excelsior! 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 Oh, wow. Look it up! up another fantastic episode of the Silver Linings Playlist. If you would be so kind, we ask that you leave us some feedback on how we did, plus a like and subscribe. We'll be back next week with another great episode. See ya!